Okay, uh, we'll be in one second. Hey, folks on Discord, okay. make a little noise. Hey, All right. Right. I'm posting my dog in chat. Oh, yeah. Dog. Dogs. Those good dogs. All right. Pixels levels Levels seem good. Um, yeah, the stream didn't catch the first part of this, but welcome to Extremely Ate Too Much for Dinner Friday Night Stream. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Um, welcome back to the Lancer May one-shot. Uh, I'm here once again with Baloney Shinobi, Dane, RDY, and T-Jabs. Uh, here to take fictional robots, mash them into other fictional robots, and see what explodes first. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm good. I was looking forward to doing this greatly. So I'm glad we're here. Fantastic. Um, well, once again, since our... So I guess before we get into the narrative stuff, um, actually, I'm going to swap the music here because fucking Jet Lancer soundtrack is great, but way too energetic to be doing, like, mech overviews. Oh, do we have music in the game right now? Uh, not right now, but we will in a second. Oh, I was going to say, cool. I was like, I don't hear it. Uh, let's see, I think this is the track I want. Yeah, that's a little more, that's, that's a little more moody and ambient. Um, Atmospheric. Yeah. Uh, all right, so now that we're back, um, if you recall, we last session we had kind of a tutorial combat session, and uh, hang on one sec. All right, yeah. Last session we had kind of a tutorial combat session. At the end of that, everyone leveled up from license level one to license level two, the first major jump in leveling up, because that is the first level at which you get to take a new frame other than the GMS Everest. So. Uh, let me go down the list of everybody here and uh, kind of introduce the mech that you've chosen for yourself. Uh, first off, let's start with uh, Service Mackleroot, call sign Deer. Tell us a Hello? bit about your mech. All right, so it is Antlers Mark II. I have taken the Minotaur frame. And so essentially a lot of this is going to be me uh, altering the rules of the playing field. Uh, one of the things I did last combat was adding heat to enemies as they move around, so I can still do that. But I get a lot of other cool stuff too that I don't want to talk about just yet. But I'm very excited to see what I can do. You did that to great effect, if memory serves. Yeah, I mean, it, it caused like, the mini boss to waste one of its turns. Yeah, you you took a you took a like frontline vanguard mech and said you don't get to move or you take heat. That was goaded. It was very good. Um, so look forward to that. Yeah, the Minotaur's whole spiel is basically, uh, I set the rules of the battlefield, and if you break those, you get smacked. Uh, next up, we have uh, Charlatan, Otto Sailor. Uh, would you, why don't you tell us a bit about your mech? That's me. I picked a mech called Hydra. Um, 
you know, in reference to the Hydra's many heads, and you can cut it off and it's still fine. Hydra is a mech that specializes in uh, drones. Uh, so it has four different built-in drones it can pick from, usually able to deploy one at any time, but when it powers up, it can deploy them all at the same time. Uh, I also have picked uh, some other non-specific drones uh, to complement it, I feel. And uh, this this particular mech is named Bishop Runout to reflect that it will be putting shit all over the field. Awesome. Oh, and, uh, dr drones with Hydra are extra strong. My drones happen to have three times the base hit points of most drones. Oh, wow. Yeah, your selection to put drones on top of drones was uh, bold and, if I do say so myself, inspired. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Patch, Galen Adams. Uh, why don't you tell us a bit about your mech? Uh, my mech is the Hypocritical Oath. It is a Metal Mark uh, mech, which means it is really good at being invisible and fast and hard to hit, which are all kind of the same thing when you think about it. Um, I have made myself very good at being very, very agile and being very hard to hit, and I have a sword. Uh, so, really, I can just go wherever I want and hit somebody. And it's very, very... It's, people can try and tell me no, but it probably won't work. You have an evasion of 14, which is yes. oh ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, but check out that E-Defense. Yeah, that's that's the kicker. <laughs> yeah. This what is, is it? I, I don't have it up right now. Six. Is six. Oh six? my goodness. He's gonna get hacked like nothing. <laughs> no. Nah. Is... No, he's gonna get hacked like something, man. This you is... can't hack what you can't see. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's actually a fair point. Can you not? Actually, that's I you can. for later. Oh, okay. You, you, you totally you can. can. I think it's I, it's still harder. I do think I'll double check the rules for invisible, but I believe all attacks while invisible uh, are a coin flip. So even I believe even a uh, attack attack yeah. is yeah. is a coin flip. Being, being invisible all the time does have its benefits. Also, as someone who built uh, for funsies, built in an atlas, uh, made an atlas build that. I believe I described as incredibly fast and agile and good and good at like tripping mechs that are larger than it, but the second that it takes burn, it's going to Yamcha Crater into the ground. I feel you. I really feel you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, fucking roll 20, please, or not roll 20, comp com, please, when I set someone's mech as the active mech, remember that that's the, what I set it to. It's fine. Last but not least, we have Davy Jones, Bill Wilson. Uh, why don't you give us the intro to your Mac? Cool. Yeah, so to round us all out, I've sort of got a more uh, well-rounded defensive Mac. It would, by, it can prevent damage by killing the shit out of whatever's in front of it before it gets a second chance. Um, on a serious note, it's pretty much a glass cannon. Um, it The whole play style of the mech is sort of build up heat for yourself and just go off for for a ton of turns at the risk of maybe like someone's friend like blows wind on you very gently and your mech explodes so that's what i'm about and that's what i'm gonna do you have also combined this i see that you went all in on um nuclear cavalier because i see you have put in the integrated mount fuel rod gun yeah that's gonna be important <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Where? it clears heat when you use it. Yeah. Yeah, and because it's a it's a weapon, because it's a mountain, I think I can use it as a part of one half of the garage, right? Yes, you can. It is, it is an integrated mount that you just have for free. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, so you can so you can overheat yourself then shout here catch and fire a spent fuel round at somebody. <laughs> that's sick. Hot potato. <laughs> You have also kind of on the, almost on the other end of, uh, well, you also have an E-Defense of 6, which is, you know, relative on, on the low end of the scale, but you've also achieved something that I haven't seen before, which is you have a tech attack of negative 1. I do? <laughs> Whoa. According I, to CompCon, you do. Yeah. <laughs> you did it! What? The frame, yeah, the, the Tokugawa has a base tech attack of minus 1, apparently. That's amazing. That's so cool! Well, uh, I hope I you're not tech attacking. Yeah, I hope I'm not- I don't think I am. Uh, I, I think you and I are going to be doing all the tech attacks already, why? Yeah, I was yeah, going to say- Mine's if the, plus three, so yeah. Same. 
if the party is leaning on the Tokugawa to handle the hacking and electronic warfare, something has gone desperately wrong. <laughs> well, listen, the chat brings up a point. If they tech attack me, can they heal? <laughs> can they heal tech damage? <laughs> Oh, that would be funny, but no, it does. It does not do the. It does not do the thing where you can overflow the damage buffer in Diablo and heal the enemy because you dealt so much damage to them. <laughs> it's a nineteen because twenty minus one is nineteen. <laughs> oh, it's. All right, so very exciting loadout we've got here. Um, so I guess let's just, let's dive right into it. Uh, so. After the last session, you were you finished up your uh, finished up your kind of like training program. You got approval to for your second license, and you put in your orders. And uh, upon leaving the training center, you are approached. Well, actually, hold on, back up a sec. Uh, for those who have not who weren't here last time, so we are the party here is kind of a loosely affiliated group of mech pilots out on a station. Out on the Galactic Rim, far from the core worlds of Union. And I'm going to get the name right this time. On the station named Sunstar Depths, a name that is not, a name whose irony is not lost on its occupants. Pop, station population of, uh, I would say, like maybe 10 to 20,000 permanent residents. Um, it is an old abandoned Union Navy shipyard and is. Kind of, kind of serves a purpose as an open bazaar and trading hub, and consequently, uh, a smuggling cove. It is at the crossroads of several trade routes out here, far beyond the uh, far beyond the Blinkgate network. Um, out here, it is this this section of space is far from Union's direct control and is sort of nominally controlled by uh, IPS Northstar. But that power doesn't mean that much when a distress call takes you know six days to answer. So. Out here, power is it mostly in the hands of uh, commercial and criminal enterprises. Out here, on, on the depths, uh, that power mostly lies in the hands of a company named Balrog Logistics. They are officially a logistics coordination and shipping company that handle trade in and out of Sunstar Depths. Uh, unofficially, pirate crews, mercenary bands, narcotic smuggling rings, and other various criminal and under-the-board enterprises all operate under their under their eyes and in their pocket. Um, station crew are contracted through, you know, through IPS North Star contracts, but ultimately, again, get most of their paycheck and answer directly to the Enterprise. And one of one of the aforementioned station security out here in the depths is Galia Al Ajani, who is kind of the uh, the de facto sheriff of the depths. And she is who is waiting for you when you leave the uh, training center and are about to head out to celebrate or acquire your newly printed mechs. Um, Galia is, again, kind of the de facto sheriff of the station, also a job broker for people looking for work. Um, was once a pilot herself, has prosthetics down the left side of, down most of the left side of her body and walks with a cane. She's kind of a leaning against the doorway as you come out and she says well congratulations on your uh, on your promotions I understand they've already got the printers working out the docks for you if you're oh, interested you know, oh go ahead I was just gonna say yeah I believe so well if you're interested in taking those new toys of yours out for a spin and she kind of waves a handheld towel she says if you want to step into a side room with me here I have work that may interest you I'll be the judge of that. I got yeah. a feeling that this work is going to come to us one way or another, so lead the way, <laughs> Miss Al Al Johnny. Uh, out of character, like, you know, in a, in a normal answer session, you'd be free to take this work or tell this character to go shove it. Uh, since this is a one-shot with three sessions, I haven't really yeah. prepared anything outside of this, so... Oh, I'm going along. You're good. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't expect that, but I just wanted to say, like, ordinarily, I like to play these sorts of things more open-ended. Uh, I did not prepare that this time. <laughs> No problem. So, so you step into a side room, and uh, upon entering, uh, Galia presses a button on the wall, and the door kind of like seals shut, and a, uh, a vent above her head kind of rattles to life, sputters a bit, and craps out. She, while pulling a pack of cigarettes out from a pocket, she slams her fist into the wall next to the vent, which sputters to life again, and this time actually spins up and begins. Uh, like you can actually feel it kind of sucking air out of the room. 
and careful to turn herself towards the vent, she pulls out a cigarette and lights it. And the smoke is very rapidly sucked out of the room into the filtration system. She says, so, about a day ago, uh, not that long ago, a couple hours, I think, at this point. Uh, let me back up. Several days ago, Long Range Traffic Control at a sister station of ours picked up what looked like a... Uh, well, it's like a derelict ship on a decaying orbit around a red gas giant. A couple systems over. Uh, they got a closer look at it and pinged it and were able to get a, uh, an identity pinged back from it. The ship is the UNS Azimuth. It's a uh, second committee warship dating back to the... It's been... Dates, dates back to the Civil War era. And it's been missing... was reported missing uh, approximately 150 years ago now. So, we seem to have found its final resting place, and it's pretty beaten up, but it seemed to be in good condition. Good enough that a, uh, sal that Balrog figured a salvage operation on a old abandoned Union warship would produce material and intelligence. That would be, uh, you know, worth something. So, they quickly scrapped together a salvage crew of veteran worker, veteran laborers out here on the rim paired them up with one of their own security corvettes and sent them out to uh, get what they could off the ship before it fell into this into the planet's orbit. A few hours ago, we got this message. And she, there's like a big screen on the wall, and she kind of like flicks something on her uh, on her tablet, and this message that you should now have in front of you uh, pop both pops up on the screen and kind of like all of your individual CompCon units ping, indicating that she's sent it to you. And it reads roughly, Salvage team aboard UNS Azimuth, orbital decay in 72 hours, team reports pirate vessel crew cut, spelled with K's, en route, Albatross team en route, ETA 70 hours, request rapid response team for near light bolt, zero G capabilities a must, and me message ends. She sighs and says, so, crew cut is a uh, pirate operation kind of down their luck pirate band that's been permitted to operate out here provided they don't get in the way of uh, of major operations they're headed by this fellow here, one Free Kasner why he has decided to take a shot at a sanctioned enterprise operation and get a big, great big target painted on his head is uh, well beyond me, but point is Kasner, seen Kasner and the crew cut Seem to have allied themselves with a uh, another regional mercenary company, Vector Triad. Basically, we got a, pirates and mercs who are trying to take over the ship for themselves. Worse yet, that ship is going to fall into the atmosphere, is going to skim against the gas giant's atmosphere in 72 hours, and it's not going to come back up again. Now they reached out for help, as the message indicated, to a uh, to the regional authorities. An albatross wing is en route for uh, rescue operations, but they're not going to be in system for another 70 hours. And by our estimate, they may not have more than 60 minutes to rescue anyone who's left on that ship. And if there are still pirates on that ship and everyone's under fire, well, point being, I don't think anyone, we don't think anyone's going to make it out alive. We are in the unique position of being able to get somebody out there in a uh, little over, in system, within a little over 48 hours. We have a ship capable of near light bolt en route. It'll be here in the station in a, about eight hours. But we need, a, we need to pull a, pull a crew together quickly that can get out there and take care of Kasner and his mercenary friends and clear the way to get our salvage crew off the azimuth before it falls into the atmosphere and gets crushed like a tin can and everyone on board along with it. So, you think you're up for it? Well, what would happen to your little nerds if we'd said no? Everyone on board would die, and we would all be out a lot of... We'd be out, so, uh, approximately 30 souls. A uh, good amount of material and f goodwill, and... Uh, well, that's, frankly, I'd probably stop giving you jobs for a couple months for turning this one down. No one's going to throw you in the brig for turning it down, but let's just say it's, uh, it'd be the neighborly thing to do. So, uh, you know how big, uh, Kazner and his new buddies group is? Like, how many, how many vessels they got? 
Kasner crew cut are pretty small operation. They uh, they're not so much they're not a large operation. They're more a small core of experienced members based out of a, an asteroid a few systems over. Uh, like most pirates out here, they're pretty good at rustling up a crew when they need to. So you're gonna find so we don't know. Quick estimate, we don't know exactly how big his crew is, but it's safe to say he's probably picked up a lot of miners, roughnecks, brigands, you know, ne'er-do-wells hanging around the docks. Uh, of, large, of greater concern to us is this Vector Triad mercenary company. Uh, they're known in the region, no official ties to anyone, so easier to understand why they wouldn't mind having a target painted on their back, but uh, Vector are known for being a pretty cutthroat group a small core of elite veterans at the at the center of them the fact that they're involved is well it's not great the salvage team itself was uh was a sal two ships a, a salvage scow and a uh, small security frigate uh or a small security corvette we estimate that the, based on intel that they sent us over the Omninet, uh, the pirate crew appears to be the vessel crew cut itself, which is a small frigate and uh, a light strike corvette from Vector. It's not exact, you know, you're not going up against an army, but it's under the circumstances, it's enough to cause trouble. If it weren't for the decaying orbit of the Azimuth, we would say to barricade yourselves inside we tell the crew barricade yourselves inside the ship and hold out until the albatross get there at which point nobody in that system stands a fighting chance but uh again given the circumstances we'd like to get anyone off that on that ship and anything they might be carrying with them off of it so you'll have the capacity to carry 30 souls back yep we have a okay. we have a we have a Corvette of our own en route. Currently, there aren't any any ships on sta station that are able to... So, real, out of character real quick. Um, travel in Lancer is either done near instantaneously by flying through a blink gate, or very slowly by gradually accelerating to, like, 0.95 the speed of light, and then, you know, breaking before you get there. There are ships that are equipped to do what's called a near-light bolt, which is... We are just going to very rapidly accelerate to 0.95 the speed of light and very rapidly drop out. Um, it's incredibly dangerous, which is why you're waiting for a ship that's actually spec to do it to arrive on station, which is why you'll have a little bit of downtime first. But it, but continuing, uh, yeah, it's a. We have a pretty good sized Corvette coming that uh, will be will have room to carry survivors and salvage on it. Gotcha. Otto will say pretty quietly it doesn't really sound like there's anyone else that can do it. It's not like I have any other plans. <laughs> there would be there's there's no point in letting these people die. I think you already got us in the hook, so we might as well sink with it. I'll go. Uh Patch is looking at, like, a palm pilot of a totally blank schedule and goes, well, nothing I can't move around. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Mm -hmm. All right. I can, listen, the, the pay for the salvage operation itself was pretty handsome. I can promise that you will be rewarded very generously for being a part of the rescue operation. Bill's ears per perk up very immediately to that news. Like, well, you know what? I was just thinking I couldn't leave my new best friends behind. Totally in. All right. She uh, makes, a, makes a couple of other quick taps on her tablet. All of your comm cons ping that they've received. They've been, you know, looped in with the requisite information. She says, all right. Well, your ship arrives in uh, about eight hours. Printers out the docks are already working on your orders. Uh, so, suggest you make yourself comfortable until then and uh, be ready to go. Oh boy. With that, she stubs out her cigarette on the. I think she has like a pouch that she takes out of her, her a pocket that she like stubs out the cigarette in so the ash doesn't go like drifting off in micrograv. Uh, turns the, off the fill. Blows one last cloud of smoke into the filtration vent. 
Hmm. Well, oh. trying to figure out what all we can do with this. This downtime. Guess we just gotta, yeah. Guess we just gotta make some preparations. On. You do. So, um, I did actually want to introduce a little downtime here because uh, I wanted to give you an option to do, an opportunity to do some narrative actions, including um, downtime actions. So, if you look either in the compendium in CompCon or on page 53 in the book, for any amount of time when they, the plot action is not moving forward, you can, uh, oops, too far, you can uh, perform a downtime action to effectively get resources for use later on. Um, there are suggested downtime actions there. Basically, what I would suggest looking for is, I mean, there's fun narrative stuff you can do. There's the old standby of the, the downtime action, get a damn drink, where you decide to go into a bar or a club somewhere. You make a roll to see how well things go. And uh, based on your roll, you see if you got anything and what you lost in return. Um, but, most down, <laughs> but most downtime actions get, give you the opportunity to uh, pick up reserves, which are basically limited resources that can be expended. Um, to aid you on your on your next mission um, some reserves that you can have include things like uh, key card invite, bribes or insider access to a particular location they can be supplies allowing for easy crossing of hazardous terrain or, or even granting immunity to uh, to certain conditions it can be a diversion to uh, allow you to take an action without fear of consequence uh, it could be stuff like scouting out the location so you have information about uh, a battle coming up. It could be extra mech gear, extra repairs, that sort of thing. Um, if in your character sheet in CompCon there are actually recommended reserves, some of which are very good. It's stuff like the, the one that I remember sticking out because I used it at one point is like overcharged ser servos, which is just, hey, for like, you have a one battle use item that just makes you immune to the slowed condition. Oh. That sick. Where do you see the suggested things? Under um, under skill triggers, there's reserves and bonuses on the narrative profile. Yes. And some people, uh, mine says no data. Okay. Yeah, you gotta um, to edit. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry. If you click, if you click at it there, there are some recommended reserves that you can take. Um, so I figured it might be fun to use because we haven't really had any narrative action yet. Start the session out with a quick downtime, gather any reserves you want, or just do any fun narrative actions you want. Uh, all the downtime activities that you see there are in the book or in the compendium. There are on the table. Um, there is also. Let me see if I can find where this is. Uh, because I'm pulling some stuff from the long rib supplement as well, there are also um, there are two additional long rim downtime actions that you can take. Here we go. Uh, if you'd like to take one of these two downtime actions, you can take a gunfight. When you get into a one-on-one -on -one duel with someone and prompt to or plan, you may gunfight with them. Or you may go diving. When you dive into the seedy underbelly of a station, you can use this action instead of the get a damn drink downtime action if you like to basically just win more fabulous win slash lose more fabulous prizes. <laughs> Gunfight, that sounds sick. Um, and if you're at a loss for anything, there is a very good section on page 53 that is just power at a cost, which is you can ask for something and you get that thing, and the GM just imposes a cost or a consequence or a complication uh, on you for that. Okay, I'm looking through these to see what I want. I got two that I'm thinking about, and I'm just trying to think about how I want, which one sounds, which one I could do better, I guess. I'm just going to also say, I really like the idea of starting a business as one of the downtime actions. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a thing you can do. <laughs> hmm. Are you going to be annoyed if we do the reinforcements one? Uh, nope. I'll have to figure something out on the fly, but <laughs> I'll, I'll live with that. I was going to say, I'm reading this and I was like, this sounds like a GM wouldn't like this. 
<laughs> Sorry, this is, is this not in downtime actions? I've gotten myself confused. Um, I'm so looking at, in CompCon, if you go to your, your pilot sheet, you get skill triggers, reserves and bonuses, and gear loadout. If you click the edit on reserves and bonuses, you get a bunch of different tabs. And uh, four of those say reserve, and I'm looking at those. Yeah, those are those are suggestions. Um you you can you can pitch your own if you like. Okay. But I think it would be appropriate for my character to kind of when he's on his own talk to his uh his drone he he's pretty sure his drone is collecting data on him to send <laughs> directly to uh his his mysterious benefactors um he doesn't know for sure like he can't prove it but he's pretty sure so he is his personal drone when he's alone he's going to say um you know this this sounds like it might be a great opportunity for you to test some tech get some uh, extra information uh, if that's something you were interested in doing it would help us out a lot uh, so what not so knowing what you, exactly who he's talking to but so what are you thinking that's that's gonna be what is that uh, what's that I, that benefit gonna look like I don't exactly know <laughs> uh, it's not like you and I have talked about the the mysterious organization very much to, to know exactly what they're what they're doing but I'm thinking like core battery might be something that's kind of appropriate or the reinforcements or maybe just scouting like something something that a shady organization would be able to provide you know I don't think it's going to be like um, like orbital drop or something like that a vehicle okay probably not um, resources or, or uh, probably not like blackmail or disguise I imagine it would be something physical or a mech power up because for flavor I kind of imagine that auto has access to the, the hydro frame because of that company yeah so accuracy could be a fun one if there is a I'm, I'm, I'm not terribly versed in all of the uh, hydra's abilities but if there is a particular ability on the hydra that you think you'd benefit from like having temporary accuracy to for the entire mission um that'd be good you could do reinforcements if you want um that'll be that means once during once once before the end of this one shot you can say hey i'm calling in a friendly mech and i'll put a friendly mech on the field okay but i'd have to like make that mech or um, i guess one of us would have no, to it'll, it'll be an M it'll be an npc class so you could just tell me and we could even speak like in broad terms like what kind of mech do you want this to be um you could say like ah, i could go for like a we could use a sniper or like ah, can we get like a bombardment mech or eh, we could we could use another like hacky mech out here and uh i'll, I'll give you a friendly npc class that'll that'll help you out thinking that without auto's prior knowledge uh maybe like core battery battery that allows a second use of the core system so right now hydra can only use all four drones that it's innate that it has innately it can only use one at a time but when it's active it can use all four so maybe maybe they want more data on what it looks like when i'm using all four at once so he gets another core use that could work, yeah. I'll be down for that. I think I'll do that. A limited weapon or system. So something I don't quite know about the drones. It says, you know, if they're destroyed, obviously, if they, they, if they lose all their hit points. They don't have a structure score, which means they just have one health bar. That is correct. Is that... When that health bar reaches zero, okay. they explode. Okay. And a full repair is like a downtime action. Like you can't just take that during your turn, right? Yes, a full repair is eight hours. Is like a full rest. It's eight hours okay. of safe, secure downtime to make repairs. That is what I thought. Um, okay. So effectively, you will only really get one. Um, you'll all effectively only get one core use because between the time you arrive in system and the end of action there. Uh, there will not be eight consistent hours of uh, downtime. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Do 
And that's scary if I lose all my drones. Um, yeah, we'll just, I'll stick with core battery. All right. Because I can do more fun things. Uh, so you just, so that you're just taking that for power at a cost? Uh, yes. Cool. Um, I have, all right, I know what the consequence of that is. Uh, okay. That's terrifying. Not, that's yeah. fine. You'll, like, it'll, it'll become apparent very quickly. I was going to say, Auto Sailor, you know, is used to dealing with shady people, but not quite of this magnitude, so he perhaps doesn't really know what he's getting into by asking for that. And I think next time he gets into his mech, he's going to see a little little piece of paper, maybe like a message that looks really garbled and fading that says double head morbid. <laughs> uh, I'll have to figure out what that means. Alright, uh, anyone else have anything? Does anyone else want to try a downtime action or go for a reserve? Um, if you don't, that's okay. I, I like... Go ahead if you want to. Uh, you can go first. Uh... I have an idea, although I'm not... Okay, I think, um... I think Servit... Because I, I know Service is a smuggler. And obviously, mm -hmm. this is a one-shot, so I don't think we've el we could ever elaborate on, like, how many people he's brought stuff to. But I feel like he might have enough connections that he's wanting to know why the crew cut is working with the Vector Triad on this mission and, like, see if there's any good information they can get out of that. Like, is there, like, a specific weapon on the ship that they've agreed to? Or, like, like that if somehow that gets destroyed, then their alliance is off or something like that? Um, I'm not sure it would be anything like that, but... So I have a suggestion, which is, how would you like to perform a downtime action to find that out? How, how sketchy do you feel like being to get that information? I mean... Service is fine being pretty sketchy. And if it means, like, not even talking to people, and if it means that, like, if it's information hidden in our systems that he doesn't have access to, so be it. Um, how would you like to take the gather information downtime activity for that? That would be wonderful. I, w I wasn't sure if it was going to be that one or if it was going to be the get connected one, but that sounds, yeah, I think going sketchy sounds more like gather information for sure. All right. Um... Also, I would like to, as a Lancer GM, like to thank you because this is probably the first time I've seen. Every time I have been in a situation where someone wanted to use this as a downtime action, it's like, okay, but I'm not really like digging for information where I'm not supposed to be. I'm like looking for stuff in the library, and there this thing here where it says like, oh, you find what you're looking for, but you have to take somebody out. It feels wrong. <laughs> it, it, he's already got no, his hands that dirty. Book. Like that's yeah. fair. It, it'd be what it'd be at this point. Yeah, I got the. <laughs> yeah, I got the new chapter in that cool manga by the clock librarian on the way out. Sometimes it be like that, dude. Don't don't hit your don't hit your librarians. No, of course not. That's no, on you preserve. Have to, you have to clock some like twelve year old who's also kind of eyeing it, and you said, "Not on my watch." <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, all right. Even caught up, nerd. <laughs> So, to perform a downtime action, you are rolling, you're just rolling a d20 um, and applying, if you think there are any skill triggers that you have that you think would apply to that roll, you can then apply them. So, this would probably be you, like, skulking around the station, like, browsing the local network, looking for ways to surreptitiously get your hands on information. Uh, do you have any skill triggers that you think would based on how you want to go about this that you think would apply here. Instead, we're going sketch, right? Correct. How about hacking in it? Yeah. If it, if it means hacking into the system. Because if not, I'll just use word on the street, but I got a plus four on hack or fix. So I like, I I like the idea. That. Yeah, I like the idea of like uh, cracking the station's security to get some information. Um, so why don't, in roll 20, if you don't mind, why don't you give me a d20 plus 4 for your hack and fix score. You got it. I believe this is it. I don't have any accuracy on, so... Oh, oh, oh. Right. Okay, well that's... 
That's that a 12. That could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. So, uh, well, on 10... 16, yeah? Uh, no, that 12 is factoring in the four. plus 4. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Nope, that could have been yeah. worse. That could have been uh, worse. So that is a... Let me swap back over the book here. That is a partial success. Uh, on 10 to 19, you find what you're looking for. And what you're looking for is... There are... This is an old, again, like Union Civil War era warship. So it would have been in, in action about 500 years ago. But again, it's kind of been... It and its crew are a handful of old Union Second Committee ships that, um, you know, basically from the more imp imperialist uh, Anthrop Chauvinist period of Union's history, um, they and their descendants would have been on the run in this thing. There, there are a handful of ships that have been, like, on the run for, for you know, since, since the Second Committee lost the Civil War. And they've just been like living on the fringes of Union, either waiting for their chance to waiting for their chance to strike back, or deluding themselves into thinking that the South is going to rise again. Um, and as such, there are, depending on how old the ship is and what condition it is, it's in. Um, there are two possibilities. One is that there is old Union military tech on there, possibly including a complement from it for a frigate like this, possibly including a complement of mechanized frames. Um, which again, would be old, but could be patched up to be in good working condition. And two would be a Union military NHP. Um, now there are, the information you find is that there are concerns about how long the azimuth has been out of commission. If it's been out of commission for 400 years and the NHP survived, what state is it in? Is it in Deep Cascade? Should we be, are we walking into a nightmare paracausal dungeon? Or is this even worth worrying about? If the ship is that badly banged up, is the NHP, would the NHP on board even still be awake and conscious? Or, or would it, like the crew, most likely be dead? But either way, both of these things are both of these things are things you find in like internal communications that are like if this got leaked to a pirate crew that was maybe down on their luck and looking for a big break, this might be a desperate enough play that they'd be willing to take that chance. So, on 10 to 19, you find what you're looking for, but you must choose one of the following. You leave clear evidence of your rummaging. You have to dispatch someone or implicate someone innocent to avoid attention. So effectively, you get what you're looking for, but you leave a, you leave a trail, or someone nearly catches you, and you uh, you get to decide what you think that complication Dude, is. That's cool. Um, oh boy. Um. I think this is. I think I'm going to choose to leave clear evidence of his rummaging because this is old information that it's just kind of like, eh, could be there, or could not be, that a uh, service feels like we should have had for this mission. So he doesn't mind people knowing that he found it. Fair enough. Um, I think the way I'm going to play that is like, you leave clear, you leave clear evidence of your of your rummaging. But no one's going to put two and two together until after you've left. So that will be a consequence waiting for you when you get back to the station. Oh, that's fine. All well, right. If if we if it saves our lives, I can hover it over their heads. Uh. So any anybody else got any anything they would like to do or get a hold of during this time? Yeah. So I have one that I feels correct, but I don't know if it's universe consistent. Um. But Hit me. but. Yeah, so Patch is looking over the contract notice, and it says something about zero G, a must, which implies this is going to be a zero G battle at least mm -hmm. once. Uh, my mech has EVAs, but I seriously doubt that Patch has had much time doing EVA flights, um, and is somewhat concerned about like spatial perception, both from like a motion sickness and just reading a battlefield in three D. Um, and would maybe perhaps try and synthesize uh, their own homegrown stimulant uh, to bolster their perception and reduce like any chance of motion sickness and test that on themselves in the moment because I think they're smart but irresponsible enough to do that. All right. 
Um, That's so sick. So what, I don't... what do you think that, what does that look like then? Um, what does, what's the outcome that you, you get from that, do you think? So I want to I wanna add in something I think might be interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, patch, since you're, I should say, since Otto is probably the closest with you, you would probably know, because he probably wouldn't hide it anyway, that he has the, the use patch uh, stim gear. Um, so you might be able to base something off of what he has, if that would make it easier. Probably. Because one uh, of them is juice, heightened senses and alertness, reduce fatigue, shorten reaction times. Juice occasionally oh, yeah. provokes rage in some users. <laughs> yeah. So then probably the way this would look, you know, because Patch at the very least is going to know what juice is. Yes. Is like, what's a, what's a, a custom version of that for space flight? I don't even know if that's a, a real thing that one could really have. Um... Sure. But I don't it think, can be. Yeah, but I don't think Patch is like cares. I think Patch would give it the old college try. Um, what that would do mechanically, I haven't thought about. I, earnestly, I thought about that being irresponsible, but in an interesting way. And that's as far as I got. I've been looking at things that kind of make sense. Um, but it's one of those things that's like, I have an EVA, so it's like, I'm not going to be load in the, the way that I would worry or I'd say like that. Um, maybe maybe on success you'd get an extra agility. Point in agility. I mean I wouldn't say no. That's ooh, that's a that's a big one. Uh, that's a really big one. Like on yeah. a twenty, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time I don't want to make you say like alright if you get a twenty you get this cool thing and if you get, don't get a twenty you get nothing. Well sure. Um, there's, you know, it could just be as simple as, like, orbital drop, but said as, like, you know, the next time a fight takes place in zero gravity, you start out really well positioned because you're, you're, you're thinking in 3D in addition to flying in it kind of thing. That could be, yeah. Yeah. I'm good with um, that. So let's see. Let me think about that for a second. Because there is there is a way to play that out. Here's the thing. There is a way to play that out where it is. The enemy has to deploy on the map before you do. But for at least one battle, that's kind of already already in the cards. Mm. Um, what if he gets like a surprise round? Like just him? Or is that too much? Ooh, let's see. For one battle or whatever. I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking I could give you, like, effectively give you something as a... F I, I want to take this and say, like, what if you got something, a quick action, as a free action that you could take um, in a battle? That's cool. Or, like, a once per? Like, like, like yeah. one, in one battle, one time, you can do, like, an extra boost or something. Like, the obvious one for me, if it's, like, boosting your perception would... Boosting your perception sort of thing would be, like, you could take the scan action for free... Um, but like, what else could that look like? It could be a lock on. Well, lock on is like be a lock defense, on. I thought. Lock lock on um, lock on is puts a lock on an enemy, and then uh, someone attacking that enemy can consume that lock on to gain one accuracy. Uh, but a lock on is a thing that you it's a it takes a quick tech action, but you get to just do it. You get to declare it. So you could take a you could take, I mean, you could say, like, I get to put a lock on on somebody as a free action. So that yeah, one, just that one, one time. Consume. Yeah. Um, you yeah. say lock on, you could say a scan. Let's take um, a, let's take a lock on. All right. I also, there is a pretty good one for, um, that I'll also throw out there, just because I think this is a good one in the mech, suggested mech reserves, which is redundant repair, the ability to stabilize as a free action once permission where stabilize is a uh, is a full action that clears all heat. Um, it allows you to spend one repair to restore all HP if you want. And then you can choose between reloading all loading weapons, clearing any burn currently affecting your mech, clear a condition that wasn't caused by one of your own, con own systems, or clear an adjacent allied character's condition. Oh, wow. 
So that's like that as a free action is also pretty strong. Also, again, that is a free action. So that is literally a free full action. That's pretty good. Um, you know, stabilize could make sense if we're talking about this would only work in a zero G. That like, yeah, thinking of like you it giving you it giving you ed an edge in the mech cockpit. Yeah, as like, oh, I'm spinning because I got hit, and I can stabilize that, and, you know, or whatever, kind of thing. That could make sense. Yeah, I'll go with that if that's good with you. Yeah. So we're one for done repair. All right. All right. Um, so, who does that leave? I think it's just me. Uh, I'm sort of torn between ammo, which would be the uh, probably the more tactical choice, or just getting drunk, slash a drink, and maybe asking about, you know, this sort of pirate captain guy. You know, what's he about? You know, is this dude, what, what type of chump this dude normally is? Get a damn drink is always a fun time. I think, because I feel like, I feel like he could, maybe not like get a damn drink to get drunk, uh, but um, maybe something about like, like sort of, I guess connections is probably what it would more manifest itself as to be like, yo, who's this pirate chump, you know? maybe learn a little bit more about this uh, assassin group from like the underworld and stuff alright yeah uh, I'm trying to think if there's like any any particular way I'd go about doing that uh, so I mean I you, I... you could just yeah if you wanted to like because here's the thing is you know no matter what, no matter what universe you're in, no matter what year it is, uh, dock workers talk. Dock workers go to the bar and they talk. And you yeah. could, you especially if you know you are of the piratic persuasion, uh, you know, making friends in every port, you could go down there, get a drink, and try to kind of make small talk with some of them and see what information you can get. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. All right. Uh, so I'm looking through my triggers, and I've got show off. I feel like there's probably some fun talent that like you can like attract a crowd with, and then sort of pick people, you know, pick up who who might know what from that. I've also got threaten, which is probably less or more fun to role play, and I haven't decided which one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what's your call? I think I wanna. I think I want to show off because I totally put plus four into that. <laughs> yep. Do something so, flashy, cool, or impressive usually, but not exclusively with your weapon. All right. Okay. So go ahead and give me a, roll me a d20 plus four for your show off. Yeah. I want to figure out what he does. Uh... He's probably, you know what, he probably uses his printer, and he, like, he prints off, like, six little bouncy balls. Bam. Massive juggler. Picks up the glass he's drinking. Juggles it without doing a drop or attempts to. Oh, no. I also like him at, because the thing is, the station, like, the only grab, there is no artificial gravity here. The only gravity on the station is, like, spin gravity, so down at the docks, you're kind of in weird microgravity. So I bet oh. there is a trick you can do where you can you can juggle to show off and then be like, you think that's cool? Watch this. And you like juggle, you order a shot and then juggle the shot without spilling it. I do I do the shit out of that. That sounds so cool. Oh hell yeah. There's a 19. <laughs> Dang. It is, I kill it. Oh, that is almost the zero complications <laughs> roll, but still pretty good. Uh, still fun either way. So... Sorry to interrupt. I have to jump out for a quick minute. Uh, I'll BRB. Sure. Okay. Let um, me know also if I have to take consequences for a, a synthetic magic drug that I'm making myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do need to think of something for that. I'll, I'll come up with something. Don't worry. Yeah. It'll happen. Um, all right. So, Davy Jones. On a 10 to 19, gain one as reserves and lose one. A good reputation, a friend or connection, 
a useful item or piece of information or a convenient opportunity. You know what's way fun? I definitely want to get a piece of information specifically about these pirates and assassin types so people know about them. But I'm gonna lose a good reputation because like maybe somewhere along the line, like I'm like doing all this juggling and I got the shot and I've got the whole room captivated. And then I, I see it in slow motion. Like the, uh, the shot starts to sort of tilt a little bit. <laughs> And it's just high up in the air, and I slowly see it pour out very slowly in my, this microgravity, and people are just having too much of a good time. And I don't want to like ruin anyone's good time. I'm a little tipsy myself. I'm like, you know what? It's you know this is this is the bar equivalent of spilled milk. No one's gonna care, and it gets all over like about four or five people, and they are upset at me. They say, "Don't you do that shit again, Bill? I don't want to see you in here again." <laughs> Sort of why I see it happening. Dang. <laughs> I mean, like, right. the not being... Yeah. I mean, listen, that's fun. It's it's always fun. <laughs> I love it. So... But yes, I do want some of that, that juicy information. Um, but... okay, so... And, dear, did you, did you have a downtime action? Uh, yeah, mine was the getting the, I'm not sure if it's an actual reserve or not, but it was getting the information about the Civil War ship, that there could be old Union military tech and the right, Union right, military okay. energy. I wrote yeah. that down on a notepad, so. Okay. Um, oh, so I, okay, so I need, or no, your consequences when you, okay, so you have that information. Uh, that consequence is going to come to you when you get back from the mission. Oh yeah, uh, charlatan. You have a consequence coming for uh, talking to your mysterious benefactors via your drones, which oh is boy. A, a bit of flavor that I love. Um, in exchange for a core battery. Yeah. Uh, Davy Jones, you showed off and uh, refresh my memory. Which did which did you get and which did you lose as a result of that? So I definitely lose my good reputation around around the around some of the friendlier types in the bar. Um, but I would like to gain a piece of information specifically about like what type these pirates are. You know, maybe if, if I can pick up something about these assassins and what type they are, you know, I would look for that information as well. Um, so Vector, so this mercenary company, Vector Triad, uh, you're not able to get as much information from them, but again, because dock workers talk, and if dock workers talk about anything, they talk to other dock workers about it. Like, you know, stuff gets, stuff gets across stations out here. Um, I think what you pick, so you get information that is basically about, like, who crew cut rustled up for this job. Um... And so I don't have like a, a roster that I'm going to give you, but there is there is a scenario in which that is going to prove to be a boon for you, um, which will will come into play once we actually get into the action. Exciting. Also, thank you, Fennec, for um, regarding Charlatan's the note that's in Charlatan's cockpit. A note that with just chunky cheese on it would be terrifying. Yes, agree. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like oh, I'm. I don't know, I want to know what that means. Wait, what bad. is... <laughs> bad tidings. <laughs> bad cheese. Nothing good. Oh no, I just remembered you you, uh, you you did the hacking. Oh no, man, you get back and it's just... And like, you're just fretting about like this whole chunky cheese business the entire mission. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Who put this here? What does it mean? Chunky cheese where? What if someone's hacker handle is chunky cheese? Oh, oh, next That'd character be... confirmed. That's my <laughs> <character. laughs> chunky cheese. Be terrible. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, so with that, eight hours pass, and I think you're all, you know, ready to set out. Uh, Davy Jones, you probably slammed some sobriety stims to try to get yourself back into into the fight, and, uh, you know, they get you they get you back up to speed, they get you sober again, which is really good, help kind of flush the, the alcohol out of your system. Uh, unfortunately, that means the hangover slams into you over the course of about 30 minutes. Uh, no way. Uh, it's rough, 
but you're you're good to go again. I think that's a good trade-off, honestly. Like, really bad hangover, but it's only 30 minutes. Like, Listen, all I'm saying is I, I read The Expanse, and there was a part in The Expanse where uh, someone mentions going to the bathroom of a bar to, get some, to buy sobriety pills from a dispenser in there, and just thinking, like, man, I would love to just have some pills that are like, all right, I'm done being drunk now, let's go. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm good, I'm going home. Hit me up. Oh, man. Uh, nice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and really quickly um, get CompCom -Comp prepped to actually run our mission here. Just give me about two seconds. Boy. All right, uh, is TJ's back? Actually, so it's been it's been a little over an hour. We've mostly done narrative stuff. There is action coming up very briefly. So let's say we take a I'll put a thing in the chat here for TJ's, but let's say we take a five minutes uh, bio break, and then okay. come back and get ready for the action. Sure, we'll do. Sounds good. All right, so everyone in the chat will be right back.
Yeah. And we're back. Whoa. All right. So, so uh. with that, so with that, everyone has everyone is prepped for the mission. Um, Davy Jones is in the horrible twilight uh, limbo realm of rapidly unsober or rapidly sobering up uh, and experiencing the accelerated effects of a hangover. Um, Deer is kind of looking over their looking over their shoulder at times. Um, um, I think I think what service does. Cheese. Yeah, I'm I'm scared of the chunky cheese. Um, yeah. So so what uh, service is go uh, would do ahead of time too, is just in case he doesn't know if he's gonna get caught now or later. Uh, so I think what he would do is he would like make up the series of notes and then like send it like uh, basically make an email and then say hey send the email at like this time just in case something happens to him. The four of them have the information. So like probably he would time it by the time we're getting like we just left the station, like the the four of us would all get like that note about the updated information with the union mi potential union military tech, and the union military and HP. All right. That's pretty serious information, or at least it sounds that way. I mean, it's pertinent. It's pertinent information to the uh, to the salvage operation, but for now obvious reasons, you can probably see why uh, the people organizing the operation would have wanted to keep down the down low. Um, effectively, you know, not announcing the convoy that's carrying the gold across the border, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. But that old NHP kind of sounds concerning if it's working. Very At cool. least in service. Uh, yeah, NHPs that have been left unattended for several hundred years are potentially a very bad time because they stopped thinking in human terms a long time ago. Yep. That makes perfect... I, I didn't even know completely that fact, but I just assumed they went crazy, so... Yep. <laughs> Good um, yeah, it's... I, I like, put... And it's not digging at you. Like, I, I personally... I, the book also kind of tries to push back on the idea of it being, like, a sanity thing, so much as it is, like, NHPs are not intelligences that think in human ways. The entire process of, like, shackling is we literally restrict an NHP into human patterns of thought. And if it's not maintained for long enough, it goes into cascade, which is those just start to break down and it stops thinking like a human and starts thinking like something else. And, you know, that's when you get into the weird paracausal bullshit of and given enough time, it starts to build a nightmare uh, pocket dimension dungeon around itself because its thoughts start affecting real space. That makes perfect wow. sense, actually. Okay, cool. And also, Holy yeah. Chunky if... cheese. Holy cheese. <laughs> Only yeah, meta, meta vault chunky cheese. Ugh, that oh, that, no. that sounds bad. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Elbridge chunky cheese. <laughs> Only cheesy thoughts. Yeah, the cheese no that one, shall not be chunk. No one speaks about what happened inside meta vault chunky cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Oh, oh, Lord. Okay, so the eight hours pass, and uh, your ride shows up. It's a good sized Corvette. Um. Way more room than the four of you need, but definitely large enough to carry yourselves, your mechs, a small, you know, boarding team into the in-system and uh, to carry anybody else that you rescue and anything that they might have on them out of the system. Um, your pilot is uh, one Ken Hui. They are a charter pilot operating out of the depths, um, fly, a ship for, fly a ship through the station, uh, known chatterbox and... A uh, bit of a show off. Uh, they, they like to hoot and holler a lot, basically. Um, and boy, if I put more thought into Ken, I would have thought of some like cool things that they could say like before taking off. I guess it is just like when everyone's strapped in and ready to leave the station, they're like, "All right, time to kick the tires and light the fires. Let's go, baby!" <laughs> and you're like, "Boy, we're gonna be on this ship for 36 hours." <laughs> yeah, what she said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so we are gonna accelerate time a little bit here. We are gonna do the the Batman scene transition thing. Da -da 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 -da. Like the so the ship take gets free of the station, um, plots course for where the system where the azimuth is, and hits a near light bolt. Um, artificial gravity doesn't really exist in Lancer. Union Union scientists have only been able to produce stable artificial gravity for a fraction of a second. 
So it really doesn't have any practical applications in terms of like actually providing stable, consistent gravity on a spaceship or a space station. Um, it does have one very good, very solid application, and that is creating a microsecond burst of gravity just powerful enough and long enough to stop you from splatting against the bulkhead when the ship you're in suddenly accelerates to 0.95 the speed of light. Um, good use. The next Convenient. several min the next the next few minutes of your life are deeply uncomfortable, and then your bodies catch up to the ship's momentum, and the next 36 hours are just kind of fidgeting around, tinkering with your mechs, and uh, getting ready for any potential fights on the other end of this. Um, it's it's a really weird operation of like. We need emergency relief immediately, and also emergency relief won't arrive for 36 hours. It's a lot of hurry up and wait. Um, so unless anybody has anything they, like, want to, any conversations they want to have or anything, um, while you're on board uh, this Corvette? First off, as housekeeping, should I, should I be accounting for any side effects of my good drug? Um, do a skill track to see if it actually works uh no because since since you're doing power at a cost you just get that thing it just works yeah um, i think i i think i have an idea of what the consequence is going to be and it's going to base it's basically going to be you're going to have a slight hangover um okay. for part of the following battle so if you i guess it's like do you you can choose when you want it i'll tell you this you can choose when you want to actually pop that um it, it will just work you can choose which battle you want to pop that in and the next battle, I will impose a similar, like, one-time penalty on you during that battle. Right. I, I also like to believe that, and this isn't a problem if there's no artificial gravity, but in the lead-up, like, eight hours, like, the world has felt distressingly flat. <laughs> oh, on, God. Like, like, because it's, it's designed to help perception in 3D space that being just on the ground is, like, unsettling and unpleasant. Yeah. Kind of almost that feeling of like walking around with like leg weights on or something and taking them off or, and being yeah. like, oh, everything like the world feels different now. You, you ever you well, ever you, go and jump on a trampoline for I a was, long time? I was say that, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then like you just like, oh, I'm getting a feeling right now where like you like lift your feet and it just feels it was distorted. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's so cool. Such a good idea. All right. Um, close the room. Minimize the wrong window there. All right. So the ride there is pretty uneventful. Um, then there is a moment at the other end where, again, uh, two or two to three minutes of your life are absolute hell as the ship rapidly decelerates from light speed to uh, regular impulse speed. Um, and you have arrived in system for safety reasons. The ship, you know, can't drop out of near light speed right next to a planet because. Uh, if you misjudge that by even a fraction of a second, you have now flown into a planet at speed of light, and you will probably not even be aware that you are dead. Whatever, you said it was a gas giant, we'll just go right through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Duh. Yeah, a, an entire gas giant appears to have been, uh, I don't know how to put this, <laughs> annihilated? Like, destroyed? No, I mean like the actual quantum oh. physics annihilated. <laughs> Well, that means there's no more orbital decay because there's nothing to orbit around, so it sounds like a mission we success. We did! <laughs> problem solved! <laughs> yeah, everyone problem. turns up to sleep. Like oh, this cheese thing. <laughs> Dude, I am digging this cheese thing so hard. Yeah, so no, that's, that's, basically, that, that's basically how this goes. Uh, you, drop, you drop out of near light, like, still a couple hours away from, uh, from the planet and from the ship itself. But from here, you can kind of get... Scopes on the Corvette allow you to... Uh, get a view of the situation and um the situation is this the azimuth itself is it's in a weird position it's clearly been through some shit it's hard to say how much of this was like drifting damage it took drifting through space and how much of it was like warped by the gravity of this planet it's a big ass planet like larger than jupiter so you know the gravitational forces when you get down close to it are extreme um the ship is partially like warped in the middle like kind of partially bent and also appears to have been like twisted like you know this as if you took like as if you put your hands on either end of a, a can and twisted it slightly um it's real beat up uh attached to it you can see is the 
so you are, I think, at this point about like um, five or six hours away from it. It's been a long, uh, I'm futzing up the time math here, but basically most of the trip was getting out here. It's going to be five or six hours to get to the ship. You probably have eight or nine hours before the ship dips into the atmosphere. Um, so it's going to be tight, but you are going to get there. Actually, it's probably more like nine or ten. If, assuming nothing goes wrong, you'll get there with about four hours to chase off the chase off the pirates and get everybody off of it, which is way better a time frame than you know the albatross rescue force that you're looking at. Um, attached to the ship, you can see the salvage scow, um, and kind of hovering above it, you see the ship that you identify from the the docks you were given as the actual uh, frigate crew cut itself. And then drifting far off, like just kind of outside of orbit of this gas giant, is the security corvette that um, was dispatched with this crew. And, you know, upon getting in system, uh, Ken and the cockpit crew make contact with them, and you get the, you get the picture. Um... Crew cut are following the salvage crew into the ship and trying to cut their way through. Like, the, the salvage team have basically... They have been cutting their way into the wreckage of the ship, trying to get to kind of the different parts of it and get to the, the heart of the ship, the data center. Um, they have been, like, sabotaging the way behind them to try and put literal walls between themselves and crew cut. Crew cut are trying to cut through the ship to chase them. Uh, but this mercenary crew, Vector Triad, are here in a light strike corvette cruiser a light strike corvette that uh very quickly assaulted the security corvette and took it out of commission they are drifting without engines and without weapons that can reach far enough to hit either of the hostile ships in the system and sure enough there is the the vector triad corvette um which i gave it a name null rapport is burning hard towards you so Ken hops on comp and says, Alright, look alive, campers. We've got we got inbound, probably gonna be here in about forty five minutes. Y'all may want to jump in your cockpits. Uh we're gonna try to engage it with ship chipboard weapons first, but you may need to hop out and swat some flies if it comes down to it. Sir. Okay. You've got it. Yeah. Alright, let's do it. So there is about forty five minutes of tense waiting and then then you get this scenario where you're just kind of sitting there, and then suddenly you feel like the ship's... There's like a little whirring sound of the engines, and then you suddenly feel the ship's momentum shift hard. Like, you feel it shift a little bit, then you feel are like kind of thrown to the side of your cockpit. Then it jumps around again, then you feel as if like your cockpit's kind of rotating around you. Uh, the ship is engaged in combat maneuvers, and then you start hearing you hear like a sound kind of vibrating through the hull. Uh, the ship's point defense cannons are firing. You start hearing sound like rain on metal, uh, which you realize is return fire from another point defense cannon peppering the peppering the ship. Um, somewhere off in the distance, there's an alarm that like a chamber has decompressed. Uh, but you know, everyone on board is already in combat protocols, already in full hard suits. So there's like, all right, fuck it. Just seal that chamber off, let it vent air. Um, and then... Everything comes to a stop abruptly, and like physically, you're shaken forward as suddenly the ship's momentum stops, and you hear a sound of rending metal somewhere, and then another one. And Ken hops on and says, "All right, we've been all right, crew. Uh, we've been harpooned. I know that sounds fucking weird, but listen, they got they they pulled a maneuver I wouldn't have thought you could do without killing yourself from the G-force. They got alongside us, and we have been skewered. We are attached to that ship, and I." PDCs are down, and if I hit the engines, there's a good chance I'll just rip this ship in half. So, time for you all to do your thing. We do our thing. Get out there. We do our thing. All there's right. There's like a hangar door that, that opens. That maneuver. There is. There is like a there's a hangar door that that opens, and in fact, I'm gonna take us to. I'm gonna take us to the next encounter. Oh boy. <laughs> Ah, so many problems. Holy All right. This map is fucking huge. What? I love I was it. just gonna say this. What the? Let's right. go. This is Gotta so zoom cool. out. Oh, where's the zoom? There it is. All right, so I'm gonna put. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Two tokens down here. Then I'll put. Get all your tokens on here. 
Hey, oh, quick, the harpoon got up. Quick question. On, yes. As far as the uh, roll 20 UI, is there a way? Because I, I have got all of your icons down here at the bottom. Is there a way I can totally get rid of that? Um, There uh, is. Yeah, so if you go to your settings and scroll all the way down, there's a chat avatar. You can make it be names only. Oh my god. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Not a problem. Where is it? I'm sorry? Uh, in it's, the settings? Yeah, it's yeah. in my settings. If you scroll oh, all the way it. down. Yeah. Got it. Cool. It's Thank so you. Good. No problem. Great. How do I also, erase lines? I don't know if you guys can see those. Um, I'm putting those lines down. Those lines are supposed well, I, to be there. I think I drew. I'm, can you not see the ones I'm drawing? That's probably uh, fine. They're just oh, yeah, like little scribbles below the shift. Oh, I can. Yeah, I can see those. Um, if you do select and if you click select and move and then drag a like square over them, you can select them and delete them. Oh, got it. Okay. There you go. And like, yeah, if you like, feel free to draw on the map. Um, also, real real quick housekeeping thing. Uh, anyone in the chat, like, if if like game music is background music is like louder than anyone in here or if like i'm way louder than everyone else give me a holler as per usual i didn't do my usual level spiel but hey here we are all right so here is the scenario do a little prep here get the turn order up Oops, didn't clear the turn order from last time all right players on the field So, players, welcome to uh, some ship-to-ship -ship action. You may deploy, I'll get rid of this line in a second, but you may deploy, these two squares here are elevators from the hangar. You may deploy in any tiles that are majority in, that have, where the tile is majority inside the uh, green square. You said within two squares? Uh, majority within the green square. So as long as most of the tile you're deploying in is inside that square, oh, okay. you can deploy in it. Like for like, this tile right here. Most of it's in the square. You can be there. Yeah, dear, you're fine. Cool. I don't think I can. Uh, I don't think I'm moving my token. You gotta go to uh, select and move, and then you can do it. Yeah, no, I'm on select and move. Oh. Yeah, I've got these really weird controls right now. Hmm. Is anyone having trouble moving their token? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because like whenever I like I go up, like my guy goes down because thinks I'm trying to pan down. Uh, I'm gonna one refresh. Second. Yeah. Yeah. I think are I'm you? Refreshing. Are you? Make sure you're using the select move tool and not the pan view tool. Yes. Yeah, I'm using select okay. move. And like, uh, if it can't, can't scroll, it's fine, but... Oh, for some reason this did not pick up that you had control of it, so let me make sure everyone has control of their tokens. Ah, that would explain it. You should be good. You, Baby Jones, you should be good. That should be your same token. Odd. Well, um, no, it's... No, so like, I... Like, if I like, try to click it, it like, thinks I'm also painting the the map as well as moving so like i'll move and pan and it's really kind of disorienting are you um, you may be somehow clicking both of your mouse buttons at once because right click by default will, will let you drag the, the map around I, I i'm refreshing okay that's not a bad idea i didn't know right click to pan the map but it, it does right. pro tip right click pans the map <laughs> And so we'll need it for this because it's. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's two green areas. Okay, I'm going to go down okay. to the bottom green area then. I think we need at least one person down there. I'm going to try and be as close to the encounter. So. Oh my gosh. I got it. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having some technical difficulties. Alright. 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 Okay. Move my guy back and then be back. Uh, so. I want to be next to Patch. Alright. Alright, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm as close. I want to make sure I'm as close to as possible. 
Does somebody want to, uh, uh, I hate to do this, uh, Davy Jones, could you come down below with the mace? That way we at least have Yes, sir. Two. Yeah, just, cause this is a big ship. We don't know where, I mean, there's two harpoons. There's probably going to be enemies coming from either side, I'm assuming? So it might be good, so yeah, there's at least one other person down here with me. I mean, we can yeah. see some of the stuff that's here, or I can, yeah, anyway. Uh, if you if you want to zoom out real far, all enemies are in fact already deployed. Like you get to the oh oh, this... I, oh I didn't even look oh geez, yeah no this this is a big map. Uh, yeah. What, yeah what this yeah. what this looks like is cool. I'm actually gonna move. No, that's a good spot. Um, <laughs> I didn't I didn't move side to side. I only saw our shit. <laughs> oh you yeah. can, you can go wherever, Lynn. Trust your heart. Yeah, yeah this is, this is large. Yeah, this is as close to the uh... this top one is closer to the things I can kill. So here go for it. I will work down here. Alright, so, uh... Welcome to the battle here. Before we get started, um, you get to you get to the... You get up to the out exterior of the ship, and you look over and you can see the Null Rep Horror, this kind of slender uh, strike core that hooked against it and already kind of, like, winched up next to you, and standing on, like, uh, attached to, the, to its exterior already are is like a complement of uh, a Vector Triad mercenary mechs. And not from one of the mechs, but from the ship, you get a transmission um, that reads, this is, Ustri Gar this is Ustri Garu of the Vector Triad, commander of the ship Null Rapport. Heave to and prepare to be boarded, and we might let you go with minimal casualties. Refuse well, and uh, no promises. Well, I might bust your ass if you try. <laughs> what is with? Is I I love I love when they get up and you like that. All right, more let them have it. More question. Yes. Is is that an acceptable way to part your hair in this world? We live in the space future. Out in space, <laughs> no one can tell you what to do with your hair. I mean, given as, the way as that evidenced by this person here. Has, has incredibly dense follicles. Honestly, nice, <laughs> nice cut. I, I, no, oh, I can't. She, I don't know what she's going for, but I'm not here for it. <laughs> she found I'm it. Not here for it. Do you think Ustri cares what you think? Yeah, I mean, she doesn't know. Does this look like the face of someone? Who, does this look like the face of someone who shows mercy and or gives a shit what anyone else thinks of their hair? <laughs> no, but Patch cares what people think about what Patch thinks. That's fair. <laughs> this is fair. This is the face of someone who has probably shot someone for insulting her hair. <laughs> what did you guys say about my hair? Oh my god, there's... All, all of these images, by the way, are from like a sci-fi portraits pack that's just a, completely unrelated to Lancer. You can get it on itch and it rules. I love it so much. It's so, so good. good. I love all these portraits. There are so many good portraits in there. I'll, I'll link it at some point just because it's very fun to have if you're ever running a game. Oh jeez. <laughs> so far away. All right, so conditions. Um, so you are out here in zero gravity. Here are the conditions. If you have, if you do not, ha so if you do not have either like magnetic clamps on your mech or uh, an EVA system, you are permanently slowed. Uh, so does anybody have, I think magnetic clamps may actually be a pilot here, but does anyone, who has an EVA system? Patch, I know you do. I believe yeah. Charlatan does. I thought Charlatan did too. I know uh, Antlers does not. Or Deer does not. Okay. Uh, Charlatan. Oh, you have a Type 1 flight system. Is that not? Oh. So I you can. Just... you. So that. I think that counts. Um. I'm gonna check. I'm not gonna be a, like, rule stickler on Zero G, but I'm gonna check to see if they have, like, a suggestion for that. Sure. Well, I, I just didn't know when. Would we not have had time to like alter small things like that when we're when we're printing, if we um, knew we were going to be in zero G? So I apologize. You would have. So actually, there would have been time to, like, if you want well, to make any on the fly changes to your mech and like swap out something for you, you would you would have had a couple hours to get ready for this. So actually, yeah. Before okay, we get started, I'm just if you do that then. yeah, if you wanna if you wanna swap out a system for a. Uh, for an EVA system, you can do that. If you do not have an EVA system, then while moving in space, you will be uh, slowed, which just means that you will have, that the only movement you can take 
The only voluntary movement you can take is your standard move. You cannot uh, boost or do anything else. I think the flight system would counter that, because you can choose to take any movement that you take as flying. It just takes like, heat. My that's true, it does. I, okay, I'm getting rid of my expanded compartment for the EVA, because I think I think that makes sense more than having the, the sleeping bag next to me. <laughs> Or, like, sleeping bag gets, yeah, gets its own chair. I think that's more bag. sense. Oh, no, not the sleeping bag. Hey, hey, Listen. I got the sleeping bag behind me, just in case things go bad. Sleeping no, bag is strong. Don't. don't underestimate the sleeping bag. I'm not. It's just I forgot about it. It's very good. What if you just had a super space blanket that you could also sleep in? Alright, so I'll go ahead and clear our deployment boxes here. Um, so, uh, so I probably know the answer now, but does anyone not currently have a uh, an EVA system? Uh, I have one. I think we're all, yeah, I think we all slapped one on there. <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna... I, I will trust you to keep track of all your, your assorted systems at this point, um, but yeah. alright. Uh, let me make sure everyone's HP is up to date in ComCon. Work with me here, ComCon, please. Oh yeah, uh, I can hit the active mode now, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when you do that, you will want to make sure that you have your new mech set as the active one. Uh, um, David, if you to set the active mech, if while you're in your character sheet, you go to your mech hanger, mouse over your mech, and in the little bottom right of your mech's tile, there will be a little power icon. Clicking that makes it the active mech. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. So now I have the right one set to active. Yeah, I mean, you can take your Everest out, but I figure, you know. No, I want the, I want the, <laughs> the Mark II. You got all the cool stuff on the new mech. Yeah, okay, so wait, real quick. So I'm on my, my Tokugawa. Yep. Press the power button. And then. Uh, then if you go back to your character sheet, there is, on the bottom bar, there's a button for active mode, active play mode. No, 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 no. how do I set it to my active mech, because it's... Oh, sorry. Um, go to the mech hanger, don't open the mech, but go to the hanger on your character sheet. Yeah. And then mouse over the Tokugawa, and in the bottom right of the little overlay, that pop, little, like, pop-in window, there is a, a power icon. Barely, it's right. kind of hard to see. I have so much shit. Alright. You do, you have ready. so many goddamn drones. Yeah. Alright, cool. I think I'm, I think I'm there. Alright. Alright, so uh... Okay. As long as, as long as you, you got the Tokugawa. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I got it. Alright. So, conditions for the battle are, this is zero G. It sounds like that's not going to affect any of you. Um... Here are the mechs that are on the field. There are two mercenary cataphracts, one elite mercenary hornet, uh, one mercenary scout, and one mercenary rainmaker. You kind of see them positioned all over here on the null rep or Oh, sorry. And a mercenary witch. Um, the mercenary hornet, cataphract, and... The mercenary hornet and cataphract are equipped for ZRG. They are equipped to fly and boost around. The other mechs are not, so all of these mechs are, enemy mechs, are permanently slowed. Uh, there's a good icon for slowed. So they can move in zero G, but they get, the only voluntary movement they'll be able to take is their standard move. Um, again, this Hornet is an elite, so it will have two structure. Uh, your objective, there are a couple ways you can go about this. You can remove the harpoons at the fore and aft of the ship, from the ship. The harpoons each have an HP of 10 and a uh, evasion of 12. You can destroy the harpoon turrets on the null report. They have an HP of 10 and an evasion of 8. Or you can... Weapon systems are down currently. Um, but they will be back online at the end of round five. So we start in round zero. If you get to the end of round five and no other objectives have been completed, these PDC turrets will come back online and basically blast the ship free. Okay. So those are your objectives. Um, 
For cover on the map, the only things that really provide any cover are... So any of these structures with that kind of like X-shaped roof on them, uh, those are all raised from the surface of the ship. They all provide cover if you stand behind them. The PDC turrets will provide cover if you stand behind them. Um, these boxes here, you can climb on top of them. Uh, some of the mercenary mechs are deploying from on top of it. But going through it counts as cover. So if you were shooting, like, shooting at... If you're here and shooting at this cataphract, that cataphract is not in cover. If you're shooting at a ship back here, like on the ship itself, that is cover because you're now shooting through a box. Uh, so any questions? Yes, I have a very important question. Can the harpoons be knocked back? The harpoons cannot be knocked back. Never mind them. They are Fuck. wedged into the ship. That makes that makes sense, but I had to ask. <laughs> That's fair. What are you scared? I it, it, don't worry about it now. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I got other stuff I can do. I can't. I, I, that's another stupid question. I can't hack a harpoon, right? They're smart poons. <laughs> They're smart poons, right? Smart poons. The future. Uh, dear, I will ask you to take one step back, like either this tile or this oh, tile. Oh, I'm, I'm probably sorry. good, but you're. Yeah, that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just do like hexes right are here. hexes are weird. Uh, yeah, that's that is that's good. Um. So yeah, you you give Ushri some some lip, and she's kind of like, <laughs> all right, fuck him up. Cons are cut, and action is on. Players, you go first. All right, who wants to? Who's? I think Charlotte. Charlotte, do you need time to set up before doing anything? I have so much shit to do that it doesn't really matter that much. Like one turn won't give me that much more or not. It's basically just if. If I go before Patch and Davy Jones, I can give one of them a turret. I would say Charlatan would probably still... I, I would say it still makes sense for you to go first right now. Yeah. I, I can't do much right now while they're so far away. Okay. Me neither. Um, okay. I believe I get to deploy one of my Orochi drones for free at the start of a thing, so... Uh, let me give you a drone icon. Let me let me decide which one I want real quick here. While you're doing that, I'll give you a drone. Sure. Uh, I'll just start with the guardian drone. Let's make that guy bigger. That's this is a little guy that can be bigger. Okay. Yeah. Compcon said that was free. Uh, is is this it? What am I looking at? Where's my drone? There's a Guardian drone, we can copy it if you need more of them. I can't move it. Uh, one second, and now you should be able to. Also, I'm going to go ahead and refresh Roll20 because I'm getting some mad memory leaks from there we go. Roll20. Yeah, I got uh, it now. So, okay. give me... So it's just, it's just going to deploy next to me. Yeah, give me one sec on my end. Uh, Roll20 is doing that thing where I go to fill a text bar and it takes like a solid two seconds for the text bar, for the text box to like show that I've selected it, which happens on big maps sometimes, and that's usually a sign that I just need to refresh. Make a smaller map. I could do that. I... Nah, <laughs> Where... I mean, this, nah. this map is so cool. Like... Where's, yeah, where's, the, uh, where's the fun in that? When I deployed the Guardian drone, it says... So it says I, it gets 5 plus grit, which we have 1 grit, hit points. So it'd be right. six. And then Hydra has uh, Detrones and Deployables get plus five, which would be 11. But then I also have the the pilot skill, Drone Commander, which should give it another five. In CompCon, it says I only have 11, when I should have 16. Is that something, like, how, how should I keep track of that? Um, is that you, the Hydra should, or is that the... Um, the Guardian the Drone. Oh, the Guardian Drone should have 16? Yes, and it has 11. Um, I am gonna keep track of it. I am gonna track the Guardian Drones HP okay. in Roll20, and I'll actually give you the ability to see and edit it. Okay. So that thing should now have 16 HP. Uh, I see 16 out of 16. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I figure for, like, deployables, especially since you're, you know, piloting a Hydra, um, uh, it's... <laughs> I, I was mentally, I was emotionally yeah, just, prepared for this. I'll say. Yeah, no, I'll just I'll, I'll, like I'll just write it. We'll just write down the HP like next to the drone and keep track of it that way. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
Um, I will give Patch a turret drone. That is a tech action. All right, let's quick tech. Has... Patch, you have drone on your face. Uh, and this one does have the correct, I believe. Has 15 hit points, which sounds correct to me. Uh, okay. And then I can do a skirmish is a quick tech, yeah. Uh, a skirmish is a quick action, yes. That is firing one weapon. Oh, okay, okay, and then it's dependent on the tech. Oh, I can deploy the gas drone as well. Oh, which is a free action to deploy it. So I'll just do that. He's deployed! And 15... Yeah, okay, 15 hit points and 2 armor for that. Alright, uh... <laughs> make a copy and rename this one. Congratulations, you're the gas drone. That's 15, 15 HP? Yes. Bring and these, these ones are showing up properly in CompCon for whatever reason. I don't know why the Guardian drone doesn't. Weird. Um, unless I misunderstand something about the interactions of things, but it seems like it should have 16. Anyway. This is maybe bad GM practice, but I am sitting here saying, you are a Hydra, you have a million drones, I have a lot of stuff in front of me, I'm going to trust you to keep track of that. It's Yeah. <laughs> uh, there might be some com thing that I'm not seeing. Yeah. But the... you, say, you say that thing has 16 HP? I believe you. I trust you. Okay. Sure. Uh, I don't know that I have that's any a, other... That's a lot of HP, but hey. Well, I have... Bunch of, it should have plus ten from six. That's that's why I'm calculating it because I have a bunch of things that go into drones. Okay. Anyway, it's it's probably not calculating drone commander. I suspect somehow that is not being brought in in CompCon. Yeah, but it is for the other two. Weird. Okay. Um, Weird. Oh well. I don't think I have any other tech actions I can do, or quick quick anything that I can do uh, besides activating the core system, and I don't want to do that. So I will. Uh, as a reminder, course, this is also a protocol, so you'd have to decide at the start of your turn that you want to do that. Well, yeah, mine, my protocol, my core system says it's a quick tech action. Oh, well, in that case, never mind. But I do have other protocols, like uh, the drone shepherd move it thing, but that's the beginning of my turn, and I didn't have any drones out, yeah. so I can't do that. Um, also, I just, I slapped that gas drone there, you can move it anywhere you want, you should be able to control it. Yes, I can. Um, is that a... That is a point. Okay. I just have so many things. Uh, <laughs> they can move independently. Also, as a quick note, the these this terrain that you see here, these walls, um, they are low enough that you can take cover behind them and they count as full cover, uh, but you can also, because you all have EVA systems, they don't count as like difficult terrain to fly over or anything. You can just, you just fly over those. Okay. They count as cover, okay. but they don't interrupt your movements. Got it. Okay. This, uh... this thing does, but that's the only thing that interrupts movement. Sure. I am going to, uh, I'm going to tell everyone that I'm going to attempt to remove the front harpoon. I would probably know the word for front. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Four? Four. 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 Yes. The four side harpoon. And you're going to will... make, make sure the front doesn't fall off. Yeah. I think I have four or five. Five. Ba -ba. Uh -huh. So I can move everything like this, and then Patch, you do have a turret drone on you. Yep. Um, but it doesn't matter, you can't do anything with it. Only I can! Uh, and then I will use my other action, my other quick action, uh, Guide the Flock, which is a quick tech that lets me move each of my drones uh, actually, let's move any drones and sensors, including not mine, up to any four spaces in any direction. But I'm just going to move this gas drone there and be done. 
actually has to be a straight line, so there. There we go. Uh, who do you want to nominate to go next? Yes. Uh. Deer does does hacking things, right? Well, I mean, what are your what are your guys' plans? What's what's your strategy you're thinking of doing? I mean, for now, we could get the harpoons off. I'm not particularly great at that, but everybody's out of range of me, anyways. So I w I would like to wait another turn because. Then I can, once the enemies start moving, I can figure out what I can do. I, mean, I figured I was going to go to an unattended to harpoon or turret and just cut it up. Do you want to go down to the bottom one? And sure. Then I can... Okay. All right, what then I you... will nominate. That was Davy Jones saying that, yeah? No, I was not. Uh, okay, then Patch. I nominate Patch. To All right. Get a move on. And I'll also say, I'll, I'll request to be last this turn because you I'm going to. I'm gonna go exposed, and that shit, that shit's scary. <laughs> uh, worst go. comes worst, I've, I, I've been, I was thinking about something, and worst comes worst, I can help you out in a pinch. Okay, cool. All right, uh, so, about, so, Patch is going next? Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. Um, okay, so, uh, the character that's going to go first is the Mercenary Witch. Uh, but before that happens, you hear something on the open comms. You hear this guy, the Scout. Um, the Scout is kind of like painting the deck with this with this spotter rifle. Like they haven't they have targeted anything yet, but they're clearly like giving you all the ones over and over comms. You hear like, um, let's like turn my notes here. Yes. Um. Charlatan, you get like a little alert that the scout is like trying to paint you with a target, and as you do so, you hear comms coming from the scout saying, "Hey, chief, that the one there?" And the hornet replies, "Like, mm, yep, that's the one with the bounty on their head. Leave him to me." <laughs> oh, let's go. That 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 price is <laughs> that... as good as mine. Is that bounty alive or dead? Uh, alive or dead? Yeah, both. Yeah. <laughs> was, that, was that was that price alive or dead? Yes. <laughs> Yo, uh, Charlton, uh, uh, I don't think I'll, I think I'll stay with you, you know? <laughs> okay. That was the, uh, so the scout painted me and the hornet said the bounty's theirs? Yeah, but, like, n none of that is a mechanical action. That's just, like, the scout right, is, right. like, sweeping the deck with, like, a sniper scope. And th okay. so this is the consequence of your action is, uh, I, there's a, there's it. a, yeah, you have a price on your head now. And the hornet's <laughs> like, the, the hornet, uh, has an ability that can make that pay off. No pun intended. Okay, well, just so you know, right now my guardian drone uh, gives difficulty against ranged attacks. That is good to know. Is that like within uh, burst one of it? Adjacent. Ah, all right. So good to know. I think those are the same functionally. Yeah. Well, we are we are now getting into the portion of Lancer where I start every time I make an attack. I say, "Hey, player, does do you incur any dif do you apply any difficulty to this role?" <laughs> That, that will take me a long time to answer whenever you ask me that, because I have a lot to look over, but I'll do my that best. Is, that is okay. And as <laughs> as, an, as a note for uh, cover and adjacency, because, so the also these things on the surface, they will provide hard cover if you're standing next to them. They will also okay. not break line of sight. Uh, all right, this is relevant because the witch is going to move. Um, so, mark that the witch has taken its turn. Did I give, I gave the witch a turn, right? I don't think Doesn't I gave the witch like a turn. Did. Let me give the witch a turn. Yikes. <laughs> second time the second time this game I forgot about the witch. I'm sorry, witch. You deserve better. Oh, I think you did Oh wait, no, no, Elite has two turns. Never mind, I'm sorry. Yes, uh the Hornet has two turns because it is an elite. I'm not sure I can do anything about that right now. This I mean like this could be a very fast battle. This was not designed to be a, a super long battle, but I figured yeah. this would be fun. Oh yeah, I'm excited. And yeah, Fennec, as I kind of said last game, is like, this isn't really a game where you try to rules layer a lot, because rules layering just kind of is the name of the game. It's it's all ridiculous roguelike builds, and they all rule. Uh, Alright, so... Now I have a bunch of abilities, because I applied the mercenary trait to all these, which just stacks on top of other shit. Uh, it's fine. Alright. Uh, the witch is gonna move... How does this look? That looks good. That looks good. 
the witch is going to move its six spaces here. That is the only movement it can take because it is slowed. Um, but it's going to take... move six spaces when it's slowed? Yes, because slowed, slowed means you can only take your standard move, but the witch does have a move of six. Oh, oh I thought that was half speed. Okay, never mind. Um... So, uh, th yes, I love this thing. Oh, like, oh, someone oh, someone oh, moves oh, into range and everyone starts painting lines. Like, all right. Fuck. It's <laughs> you, just that you range. And all right, you in range. <laughs> what do we got? Uh, <laughs> can I snap the shit out of you? All right, I forgot to move that back. All right. Um, so the witch is going to do two things. First, it is going to make a tech attack against Charlatan. So... Uh, Charlatan, do you... This is a quick tech against you. This is against your E-Defense. Do you uh, place any difficulty on this attack? Uh, uh, I don't think I can do that. It's just a regular tech attack versus yes. a ranged attack. This is a quick tech. I have a thing that says ranged attacks add difficulty. I don't know if that uh, applies okay. to this, but that's the only thing I can do. It says nope. ranged attacks. Don't think that counts. Uh, right. E-Defense is 12. All right, so I, this is against your E-Defense as a 17. That seems like it hits. All right, uh, Charlatan, take one heat immediately, and at the start of the Witch's next turn, uh, you will take... Gotta get back to the Witch here. At the start of the Witch's next turn, you will take a further four heat. Ow! Okay. So the Witch just doesn't get another turn is what I'm hearing. <laughs> that, that's why would that's that a strategy. Well, if someone blows up the witch. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be that's, Yeah, that's gotta be you. I'll do my that best. might be more valuable than the, the harpoon, honestly. Alright. The harpoon is um, a win condition. This is where I this is where I get to be a little mean. Alright. So, uh, Davy Jones, this next, atta next attack is going to be against you. This is against your E-Defense. Is there any reason you would uh, <laughs> apply difficulty to attack attack? I'm going to take Sorry, that as a no. No. This is against Davy Jones. Okay. Don't hurt me. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to switch back to the... Alright, so this is against your E-Defense, which I believe was six. Yep, the big old six. Please... Please. Aww. That hits. All right. Uh, that is predatory logic. So as a reaction, um, the character targeted by predatory logic, as a reaction, uses a weapon chosen by the witch to attack a character within range chosen by the witch. Oh. Oh no. Oh, boy. How are you guys? It's okay. I'm not in danger zone. It's not so bad. I'm just in normal mic right now. <laughs> I am sticking away from you. Yeah. Don't worry, that's not an ability it gets to use regularly. That uh, Peek behind the curtain. That ability has a recharge of 6, which means every turn I roll a d6, and and that ability is only back on the table for me if I roll a 6. That's cool. So, so this, which one you want? This, <laughs> this, is, this, is a, this is a big whammy, but like it's a big whammy that I can't use terribly often. Um... Okay, I'm not gonna be that mean. I'm gonna use the charge blade and not the the torch, because opening with the torch. I do want to be mean here. I don't want to be that mean. Well, I was looking. The meanest thing you would do is just shoot a fuel rod gun right now. I mean, I could, but all well. Oh. I mean, that's 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 actually because you don't have any heat. That's like less damage than. Uh, yeah, right actually, no, like oh, yeah, that would be me because I could deprive you of one use of it. Now I'm just yeah. I'm gonna swing with I'm gonna swing with the charge blade. Listen, this is the first time in my career as a Lancer GM I, that predatory logic has ever actually hit. So I'm just I'm I'm not gonna get greedy. I'm gonna be happy with that hit. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be content. Yes. All right. So uh, actually, so Davy Jones, uh, please make an attack against Patch using the charge blade. Uh, this give is me that, brave. Give me that roll. Yeah, let me, um... And patch, this will be against look. your... This will be against your evasion. So, oh, great. Evasion so, is, one, right? Evasion is high. Yeah. Yeah, so here's here's the trade-off is, yes, patch is very hard to hit. Oh, oh and, and once my turn starts and the integrated chaff launchers go up... Okay, so how do ties work? Who wins uh, ties? Attackers win ties, so you that win does tie. hit. Yep. Um, 
unless I count it as having started my turn, but I don't think my champ launch is scope till I actually as, start. That is not the start of your turn. No, nope. yep. until until you All actually right. take a turn. All right, so yep. that sets damage from the charge blade. Um, All right. That is one d one d three energy plus three. That is armor piercing. And also, it's one for the grit, right? Uh, no, not for damage. Woof. All right. All right, Max that's that damage. is six armor right. piercing damage. Wait, 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 David Jones, we're, are we the we're the we're the Huckleberry ones, right? No. No, no, it's it's yeah. you and Charlatan. All oh, right, never mind. No, we're not. Yeah. Uh, wow, new. okay. I'm real glad I didn't have you use the torch, because, like, I act, I almost feel a little bad about, like, all right, predatory logic finally hit. Ooh, that was max yeah, damage. To, that was a lot of... Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that would have been... For the record, uh, if we had used the torch there, and we'd gotten that max roll, you would have taken nine damage. Yeah, that would have been... Would be burn. Well, more importantly, that would have been burn, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is real nasty. Zone, and if I was in a danger zone, that three would also be burned, so... All right, so, what I get to do. so that is the witch's turn. The witch is done now. So, Patch, it is your turn now. No, All right. Sorry. <laughs> My condolences. So, so rather than count these out, because we're going to be boosting, and that's a lot of squares to count out. Um, and I think I throw some kind of, it's like, well, okay, then. Uh, let, me, let me redo this. I'm going to move and boost towards the lower harpoon, which is very at the speed of very fast. Yeah. Because I have seven move. I think that's here. I think that's correct. Fourteen. That's fourteen. Yeah. 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 Let me make sure I have that right. That that was okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was fourteen. Um, and then I'm going to lock on to the harpoon. All right. I just zeroed in. What what that gal did to her bangs is what I'm going to do to this harpoon. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Brutal. Say on open comms. <laughs> I say, oh, of course I say that on open comms. 100% on open comms. I love that, so like, sad. the first thing you saw that portrait is like, lore question? Is that okay? <laughs> is, can you do, is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> is, is Ustry wanted for hair crimes in any systems? Heresy. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so all right so patch i believe do you have any other actions you can take nope that's me uh, all right would you like lemonade to go next who wanted to go last me uh davy jones did so yeah. dear next dear. dear next yeah let's see what i can do next turn all right um well in that case it's going to be the the elite hornet is going to take its first turn. Oh boy! It's afraid of that. Oh, you're about to eat those words. Hey, wait, never mind. You're good. <laughs> I regret not move being one square up from my starting position. Now I'm just too far away from the witch. It's a real shame with Dave Jones, because if it was a reaction fire, I'd have a plan for that. If my turn had already started, I would have had a plan for that. But turn zero is the one time that I have to just kind of take hits. Yeah. Uh, uh... <laughs> All right. Um, so the first thing it is going to do is it's going to move. Yes. So threatening. It's going to move six. It's going to boost six. Oh, he's coming at me. Oh, he's yeah. coming. Oh, Lord, he's coming. Oh, Lord, he's coming. Uh, okay, and that is range five. Um, the Hornet, so the Hornet is like, the Hornet is size one half. It's very small, and it's, but it's basically a guy in like hyper maneuverable power armor. Uh, let me actually zoom in on the Hornet. Also, all tokens here from are from uh, retrograde tokens who are fucking fantastic. Uh, they they do wonderful art. So this dude uh, flies up and like basically a large like harpoon gun of their own like flips out on their shoulder and fires at you. So this is a full action. This is the only thing it can do. But um, charlatan, give me a hull save. 
And your okay. save target is 12. So that is uh, d20 plus your hull. That's just a flat score or a flat modifier. Plus my hull, which is zero. Okay. So I think the only one of yours that's zero. And your target, again, is 12. You're back. Okay. Fine. Oh, no. All right. Uh, so that is a... That is a... That is not a success, so... Um, all right. Uh, both the... One second... parsing the text on this. Um, okay, I think that makes sense. So I'm going to read this as, the, the text here is, the target must succeed on a whole save or be impaled, at which point the javelin tethers itself and its victim to the ground, rendering them immobilized and shredded. I'm interpreting that as both of, both of these units are immobilized, but charlatan, you are shredded. Both units, including the Hornet? Yes, the Hornet is immobilized. Okay. I'm interpreting that as you are shredded. It'd be weird for the, the Hornet to also be shredded, but it makes sense yes. because it says Javelin tethers its... Oh, sorry. The Javelin te the javelin tethers itself and the victim to the ground. Okay, so... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that is, the Hornet that is immobilized weirdly either. Weird. Oh, okay, no! So, um, so Charlatan, oh, you are oh. now... The Hornet went fishing, and you are now pinned to the ground. You are immobilized and shredded. Uh... You can attempt to remove the... You or someone adjacent, a character adjacent to you, can attempt to remove the javelin as a by making a hull save as a full action. Uh, until that happens and you succeed, you are pinned down here. Okay. And that's the horn's turn. And that's not... Okay. Maybe Real I don't play. grasp what ranged attacks are. So that was that was not an attack. That is just it's the, just a system or something. Yeah, that is just a uh, the hornet does this, and if it and you then react to it with a save, it it still will have any difficulty if if it tries to shoot you with something, that will still incur difficulty. Sure. Okay. Um, so that will still like that will still come into play. But for now, you are pinned down, and I don't think you have armor, so I don't think shredded actually. I have. Hydra has one armor. Oh, okay. So, okay. You do not benefit from that one armor while you are shredded, or any uh, resistance, any resistances to, to damage. Right. All right. Uh, that's that's the horn's turn. So, um, Davy Jones, you were going next, I believe. Uh, no. Or, or you were right here. No. Okay. Deer, right. Davy Jones wanted to go last. Got it. Yeah, uh, I do have a quick question. Uh, yes. Whenever I got hacked, did I get a heat? You did not. Dang. Okay. Okay. Jeez, man, if that if that hornet had been immobilized, I had something that I was gonna try to just book it and do, but I can't right now. Oh, uh, uh, Patch, are you gonna be good on your own down there for now? Probably. Uh, so if that's the case. Jeez. I had a plan and then everything just fell apart. Um, I gotta get closer to that. So... I'm going to do... So I gotta start booking it. So I have to go... Let's, let's double check what my five is. I'm gonna make a retroactive change here. The evasion on the harpoons is 10. It has occurred to me out of the blue. I'm calling an audible on that because it has occurred to me that an evasion of 12 is kind of ridiculous. Pretty good for a <laughs> stationary, presumably stationary object. Yeah, I mean, my, my thinking was the, the turrets themselves have an evasion of 8 because they're big turrets. The harpoon is hard to hit, so it has an evasion of 10 because they're small things. Yeah. But 12, 12 would have been, I think. Now, now that we are in the action, I'm making some dice rolls. It's like, mm, 12's a lot. 12 is, let's not do 12. <laughs> Yeah. Let's do ten. <laughs> I'm I'm allowed to do that. that. <laughs> Let's call an audible. Okay, I have to I have to boost again. Um, 
really sucks. I am not sticking near you, Davy Jones. Uh, it's fine. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. I say from a sparking cockpit. Uh, cockpit. Uh, so <laughs> I will move here. I'm using my first quick action to move there. All right. And then I'm. Oh, I only get one quick action. Another quick action then. Okay. You can overcharge to take another quick action. Yeah, and I'm honestly debating it. Um, you cannot, you cannot at this point overcharge to take a full action, but you can overcharge and have two more quick actions available. That makes that makes sense. Um, oh, hold on, I I have one ability I need to check too, but I think I think I know what I want to do. Hold Jeez. Sorry, I had a mm -hmm. whole plan and everything just went out the window. So why don't we just do That's this? That's okay, it happens. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I'll i just go ahead and overcharge because I want to do that. I just forget what my hacker ability is. Oh, hacker one. Here it is. All right. Um, so, uh, cool. Um, I am going to say I am going to... Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go ahead and... Let's just start easy. I'm gonna go ahead and banish the. Here Hornet. we go. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> so I'm I'm banishing. So I'm locking onto the Hornet, uh, and then the green like uh, power of the Minotaur flares up, and I'm immediately consuming it on the Hornet with a banish ability, which gives me one advantage on this. However, when I do that immediately, uh, when I when I oh when I hit with attack attack, so I gotta see if I hit first. So, okay. So you are uh, doing viral logic suite, and what's this other thing you're doing? That's you're seeing if you get an accuracy on it. Uh, no, no. So uh, sorry. Uh, with my two other quick actions, the first one I'm gonna lock on, and okay. then I'm gonna overcharge and right. banish. And so you're gonna? Are you going to immediately consume that lock on? Yes. Got Which it. gives me advantage, and then if I yes. hit, something good happens. But mm -hmm. I need to hit first. So I have a plus three with one accuracy on my tech attack. Oh! That was a 22. That's definitely, I mean, tech attacks don't crit, but that's definitely a success. <laughs> that is definitely a success. So because this is an invade, I believe it automatically gets heat. Uh, what we had discussed last time? Yes, because it is inv invaded, it does take the heat, it does count as an invade action, which makes it take heat as well as... Actually, what am I doing? I might actually just say on the thing here. Viral logic suite. Invade, the system provides additional options for the invade quick tech action, and the invade quick tech action says... You invade, they take two heat. Um, yeah, they take two heat automatically. All right, so I'm marking two heat for the Hornet. And you are also banishing it, yes? Yes, but that's not the only thing. Because of my hacker ability and the fact mm -hmm. that I hit with a lock-on. Correct. It, I, you, The target must choose to either take two heat or be pushed three spaces in a direction that I choose. Ooh. It's going to choose to be pushed three spaces. I figured, but that Go just yeah. means... But th Here, that means a what's couple a, things. Yeah, so, downside of the horn, it can't take much heat either. <laughs> yeah, um, so okay. I'm going to say it gets pushed back to here. Uh, that was here? Uh, yes. And so that means next time it moves, every... every let me see if it's two spaces. Um, for every... Uh, space they voluntarily move they take up to two heat up to a maximum of six and since they're already at one heat that's good and hopefully that helps charlatan because it gets a uh dis it helps give the opponent disadvantage on ranged attacks because of the uh drone next to it yeah yes so, okay, so hopefully that, is... that helps you out it does certainly hydra right. is certainly not as as helpless as you might think in this situation though i haven't cool. activated my core ability all right that was, well, a, that was a good counter that's still very good. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. But yeah, that's one of my three overcharges, so that's all I got. All right. Um. So, so as a reminder, you can take as many overcharges. I believe you can take as many overcharges as you want. You just take heat. You just be, really begin taking heat after that. Um. To that oh, point, right. 
Yep, dear. My heat goes up. Yeah, mark yourself for one overcharge and mark one heat, please. Done. Uh, I'm gonna be right back one second. Okay. I'm really glad that tech is half court. <laughs> I have other stuff that I would like to do, but that's just the one that I think made the most sense in the moment. Man, Banish is such a good ability. It is. I got some fun. other stuff too that could be good. Banish is also a really fun D&D spell. It is. <laughs> actually, <laughs> speaking of that, I actually have another ability that's basically like Banish. Like that, like D&D Banish for a turn. Hey, I don't want to deal with you. You guys protect me for a second. Shin Kikoho, and you're gone. <laughs> well, well, I was thinking too, worst comes to worst, if Davy, Davy get Jones gets in a bad spot, I can use that ability, get Davy Jones out for a minute so that we can still be overheated without worrying about taking damage. But like I can banish anybody. Davy Jones? Yeah, yeah, I can banish Davy Jones for a turn. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> that would be incredible. <laughs> also, I'm back. Oh. I thought I saw a flying bug in my room, but it was fine, actually. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Chad. I'm sorry to put that evil thought in your mind. <laughs> How dare you? No, it's some, like, I don't know, something about my, my windows and, like, the window AC is just, like, every summer, like, once once per evening, a bug gets a small, like, gnat or something gets in here, and sometimes I see something out of the corner of my eye, and I'm like, huh? Huh? <laughs> Who dares? Oh, no. <laughs> it's it's fine. Who are you? I'm, I'm used to it. Okay. All right. Like... Um, so, Davy Jones, you are, by process of elimination, going to go next. Yes. Um, all right, the Mercenary Rainmaker is going to go next. It's our bad boy down here. But uh, uh yeah, that, that Banish and Hacker 1 combo is incredibly strong and was a very good play. Well done. Uh, okay, it's just going to... Check some ranges here. Measure, 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 measure. All right, uh, I'm not going to move the Rainmaker, which means there's only really one thing that it can do. Actually, no, there are two things that it can do. Okay, that's cool. Um, it is going to pop off these missile pods that it has on its shoulder. Um, and they can attack. They have range 20 and can attack one to three characters at a time. So, that means... Uh, I'm out of range, haha. <laughs> uh, however, Davy Jones, Deer, and Patch are all in range. What? Yep, yep, yep. Alright, so this is a roll against each of your evasion. Um, do any of you have anything that would confer difficulty on this roll? Yeah, two difficulty, dog. What? So, uh, the chaff launchers give me soft cover no matter what, and a thing of metal mark is that soft cover confers two difficulty instead of one against range attacks. Damn, that synergy, bro. Yeah. Nice. Oh, because you didn't make an attack or force a character to make a save, so you still have soft cover, don't you? Yeah, baby. Okay, that is one. So that's one difficulty, not two, but that is still a difficulty. But, no, but it's soft cover and then metal mark makes oh. soft cover worth two difficulty. Oh right, thank you. Okay, yeah. this is going to happen a lot. <laughs> to to Fennec's point about this game's rule set has so many things to make GMs cry. There is a certain you are gathering that there's a certain point where I stop making assumptions that I know everything going on with your mech and say like, all right, I want to attack you. What happens? I mean, there's too many combinations of things to really know. Yeah, there's so much in this game, but it's very good. All right. So, um, also, as a question, I assume like if I ran the whole turn, when my turn ends, I'm considered stationary and stopped. Like you're um, not in the state of moving still. You are correct? not still in the state of moving. That is correct. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, but because yes, because you did not make an attack or force another character to make a save, you do still have self yep. cover. Yep. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll just do that first. So you have the two difficulty. So, Patch, this is against your evasion. Yep. That is a nah. three, which I am pretty sure would miss all of you, but hey. Does it hit? <laughs> but, but maybe. Billion. Is that good? 
Um, okay, Deer, this is going to be against you. Do you uh, do you apply any difficulty to this attack? Uh, no, I don't. Just try to hit a 10. All right, this is against your evasion. That Definitely does hit. Does. All right, uh, hold off on damage because I do roll damage for everybody. No All problems. Ones. So, uh, Davy Jones, this is against your evasion. Do you apply any difficulty to this attack? No. That is a six. Yeah! I believe a six misses. Yes, I have a ten. All right. Um, so, oh. dear, you are you're a lucky winner. You're the only one who gets hit. It's hold okay. On. I'm tankier than normal, so... All right, uh, that is four explosive damage to you. All right. Um, but then the Rainmaker does pop, like, pop out six large rockets that fly up into space. I like, if you were on the ground, these would be rockets that fly up in the air and then prepare to, like, come back down on specific targets. Um, these just, like, fly into space, but you can see that they are, like, lining themselves up for... To, to land again, so I need to check the range on what? Devlin rockets. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Whatever, I sealed my fate. I, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Yo, this airstrike better be worth it. <laughs> Alright, so there. I think that's within range 20. Oh, I yes. see. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna put one there. Wait, so these, are, these are delayed? Yes. So basically, there. if you end your turn there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me just check range on those. All right, those are all legal. So there are rockets hovering in the air. Um, the next time a character moves through, starts their turn in, or passes above one of these spaces, you are hit by one of these rockets. Out of curiosity, is that a reaction? No, that's a that's okay. a quick action. Gotcha. No, no, no. The, the the rocket hitting is that a reaction? Oh, the rocket hitting is not a reaction. No. Okay. Gotcha. Um, this is actually, d you will appreciate this. This is the Archons from XCOM 2. Um, because yep. this effect lasts until the end of the rain, the start of the Rainmaker's next turn. So this is, hey, the Archon fired those pillars into the air, and uh, you need to move out from under them, or you're going to get whacked. All right. Um, so, those, so if you move through those, then you get hit for damage. And that's... Uh, that's NPC turn, so it is now Davy Jones' turn. I feel like I want to get rid of this elite mercenary thing first, so... That was a strategy that seemed to work in the simulation. It was fucking shotgunning the elite unit, and then yeah. dealing with everything else. <laughs> right away. Oh, what's my speed? Five. Five, and then I'll be here. You probably don't want to move next to the rockets. Can I be next to the rockets, or, or do they have a blast, or do I know? You could be next to the rock, to the rocket space. Um, you just don't want to go into the rocket space. Oh, okay. okay. Oh god, I have a really dumb idea for next turn. Do uh, it! Uh, barely out of range. You guys aren't even gonna- you guys are gonna kill this thing before I get a chance to activate Orochi. I, look, that that's elite. It has two structure. <laughs> yeah, that's a good time. I mean, I did say that about the cataphract, <laughs> I guess. So I'll, uh, I think I'm actually gonna take an... I'm gonna take a heat to overclock, or overcharge. Dang. So I can do a move. And I'm literally gonna boost, like... Here. Okay, right. so you still have two quick two, actions four, then. Five. So I'm actually going. So let me go ahead and mark this heat, and then I'm going to barrage. Uh, so let me go ahead and heat this one, and then I'm 
gonna go garage with me with my torch and my, I guess, last much better. Yeah. Okay, so you so you overcharge at the start of your turn, move, no. use your overcharge to, to then boot, boost, to boot. and now you have still your full action to take. Yes. So okay. Yeah. I'm going. To, I'm going to actually. I'm going to use my torch and my annihilator. All right. To uh, slap this man silly. Um. So, so your torch only has a. Okay, your torch has a threat of one, but do you have something that increases its threat? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention at the start of the turn, I'm going to expose myself. Uh, that's one of the things I can do. Uh, okay. As a protocol, I can I can choose to expose myself until the end of my next turn. So first I got these damn batteries, which gives uh, all my energy melee weapons plus one threat, so it puts it at two. Uh, and then when I, I have a frame trait called Limit Break, where while I'm exposed, my melee weapons gain one threat, Oh, okay. My ranged weapons gain five threat, or five range, sorry. And all. And when the token. Sorry, yeah. Oh, it's ranged and melee attacks deal plus three energy bonus damage on hit. So. Wild. So I'm gonna kill the shit out of this guy. So, oh, wait, so are you. So you are like. That's activating your core power? No, that's just something I get to do. But I'm exposed until the start of my next turn. Oh, sorry, I was reading the wrong thing. Live, okay, limit break is a passive. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, and then well. the, yeah, my radiance is kind of wild. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but so yeah, I'm just gonna go bananas on this man. So I'm gonna roll <laughs> first for my annihilator. All right. Which is um the numbers of the target. So that's, um, this is armor piercing, and it does 1d3 plus 2, so that's also, cool. also does like heat to you. Yeah, so first to you. Okay. Oh, that's a crit! For the that's a raw crit. <laughs> Holy roll. shit. So, right. you, so you get to roll the damage twice and keep the better result. So I'm going to I'm going to do slash roll. I'm all right. Let's, let's I'll remember that for the annihilator. Or wait. So how, how do you do a barrage? Do you just roll accuracy? The barrage is just you attack with two weapons. So okay, I'm I'm just gonna do the one after the other. Okay. Well, you um, should you should roll the damage for the annihilator first because that could have an effect on the torch, on the torch attack, depending on how much okay. damage you do. Um, yeah, so let's get so the damage from the annihilator. Let's do slash roll 1d3 plus 2, or let's just do 1d3 keep 2d3 keep 1. Precisely. Dang, okay. Well, okay, well, whatever. Bad luck. It, That's... it gets 5 bonus damage because the plus 2 from the annihilator and plus 3 from being exposed. So it's a 6. Got it. Uh. Oh, melee range and melee attacks gain three plus Jesus Christ. So yeah, okay, so that is <laughs> three, so that is still so that's six total, right? Yeah. First attack. Holy fuck. You thought you were safe. Yeah, you thought wrong, bitch. Alright, that, does, that doesn't structure it, but that's a lot of damage for, for the hornet. The hornet's very small. <laughs> that's what so, I thought. Uh, now I'm going to strike with my torch, which will be another Flash roll 1d20. And that has burn, so that's nasty. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, that hits. So that's 1d6. Slash roll 1d6. Are you kidding me? I'm mad. And roll then... better. That's, I know. that's extremely rough. Holy shit. Okay, so, so that was a that was a one for the damage, but I'm so it does checking. Three, so it does three energy damage for being exposed, and then three burn damage, so it's still seven. Hopefully, shit. Holy moly. I mean, this is Nuclear yeah. Cavalier, right? Yeah. No, this okay. is just Token oh. Gala. By the way, so th I wasn't kidding when I say it's a damage prevention mech. It kills whatever is in front of it before it gets a second chance to attack, but if its best friend <laughs> blow someone just blows on you, then you're gonna see, like... I'm yeah. making a very calculated risk. I'm not, e I'm not exaggerating when I say if, if I get unlucky and someone hits me, if someone hits me and does like literally five damage and then I get unlucky, my mech just blows up. Right now. All right. 
<laughs> All right. So okay. So uh, Davy Jones, walk me through this again. So you, that is so you rolled a one on your damage roll, but that's an extra three. So that's four energy damage plus yeah. three burn. Correct. Yes. So that's seven damage. Okay. And that was your second attack, right? Yeah. Okay. That's so. still a lot of fucking damage. Okay, so that's seven damage, including three burn. Yeah. Um, that structures the Hornet. Hell yeah. Good. <laughs> so, let's get the, uh, let's get the structure damage table up here. Let's roll for structure damage, baby. Also, please, don't hurt me. <laughs> uh, if you don't want to be hurt, um... It might be best for me to go next. Well, so here's the cool thing. Since it's just something in my next turn, if I go next, then I then I get to then I get a whole other turn of just unloading like that. Well, well, can you go like twice in a row though? Yes, well, I mean, David. It's the round, yeah. Da oh, yeah. okay. Because the round That's rolls. Why I have to go loud. Yeah, NPCs well, are, NPCs are all going to take their turns now. So Davy Jones could still get shot by this hornet, but. Uh, once the round rolls over, Davy Jones can go first and uh, oh, well, never mind then. take care of that. Go now, if I had known about your like cool like Delius like spell casting thing, I definitely would have gone second to last and then asked that you do that shit to me. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I, I I have a lot of things I need to do right now, anyways. So it's okay. Okay. <laughs> well. Whoops. All right. Good. Um. Let's just hope you live. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> well, we're, well, we're going to find out what comes of this, because I'm going to have the Hornet take its second activation now, and the first thing you hear over comms is like a, like, the Hornet is, like, torn up at this point, like, on fire, like, parts of it are scorched. And over the comms you hear very scratchy, like, motherfucker! Yeah, I hit like that. Um, <laughs> it's not going to move. Is that No, Ustri is not in the Hornet. Um, Ustri is in the ship. But Ustri, you can you can probably rest assured that Ustri is very unhappy about what's happening outside right now. <laughs> um, okay. The what are the sensors on this thing? Oh right, not good. <laughs> That's fine. Um, okay, well the Hornet is not gonna move, but it is going to um, skirmish you, Davy Jones. So this is against your evasion. Which is ten. All right, that's oh, a hit. Oh, that hits! Oh god. So you are exposed. You are exposed. Yes. Um, fortunately, it's only two energy. It's only one energy damage, so you take two energy damage. Yeah. Um, actually, okay. hold on. Let me double Wait, check the order of damage because your armor may reduce that. Although. Okay. Oh what? That would be nice. <laughs> hold up. Okay, exposed. First off, what does exposed do? As we're open, all kinetic explosive or energy damage is doubled before applying any reductions. Okay, so that is increased to two before applying any reductions. So it's increased to two, but then you, yeah, so you only take one damage from this. Okay. Actually, yeah, so the fact that you are exposed, the fact that you are exposed is literally the only reason that the Hornet can even damage you, because that thing plinks. Um, <laughs> But its its power is not in the in the its power is not in its damage. Uh, that is the stinger pistol. It zaps you, and you are impaired until the end of your next turn. What's impaired mean? Uh, impaired means you incur one difficulty on all uh, basically everything for your turn. All That's all your fun. all all attacks and um, tech actions you get you have one difficulty on. Okay. Um, the hornet is going to make a last ditch attack against you by using this impale systems quick tech um so charge system uh no that's gonna hit davy jones because the I'll, I'll tell you i'm not i won't tell you a lot of stats about these things i'll tell you about the hornet because the hornet's probably about to explode in space um the hornet has a sensors of five so impale systems is a very cool system but the hornet has a sensors of five <laughs> um okay so oh it's because i pushed it out it can't use it against you Oh, yeah. Well, no, I was asking if it's the same system. No, not this if is I was the target. This is attack attack. Um, okay. So, like, the, all the Hornets' stuff revolves around, like, pinning targets down and that sort of thing. So, this is called sure. Impaled Systems, but it's attack attack. So, uh, this is against you, Davy Jones. 
against your E defense. <laughs> That's pretty wow. low, if I recall. I rolled the same thing. You did? Incredible. I, I, rolled, you rolled. I rolled another 17. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, well, so... Well, I can say it hits. <laughs> all right. Um, well, you take... You take three heat, and until the end of your next turn, you are also jammed, which means you cannot communicate with any uh, uh, any information that you have. You cannot communicate to okay. other pilots. Hold up. There's something I want to check. There's a... Uh, I think I, while I'm in... Yeah, I've got these people... You oh, start okay. This is important. Zone. If you start your zone, turn in the danger zone. You regain... Oh, no. I did start in the danger zone, so... So I just get three heat. Okay, so sorry. This is actually uh, this is actually more than that. Jammed characters cannot use comms to talk to other characters, make attacks other than improvised attack, grapple, and ram, or take reactions or benefit from tech actions. So all you can do is like try to punch at something with your fists, basically. Oh, guess I'm doing that next turn. So. In my next turn. So you are you are in status city until the end of your next turn, Davy Jones. <laughs> yep. Uh, that sounds fun. Uh, and I get three heat as well, right? You get three heat as well. So I have you as having six heat total now. No. So I forgot to announce that the, both the annihilator and the torch give me two heat, and I took oh, right. one for the. Uh, so I was I, I ended my turn in the danger zone plus the three that puts me at eight. All right. Well. Guess once you're not jammed anymore, it's time for that fuel rod gun, huh? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> um, can I grapple the harpoon? <laughs> yes, you can grapple the harpoon. You can grab the harpoon. I love this harpoon. Um, okay, well, oh, oh, are you talking about the harpoon that's in the ship? Because you, you are not harpooned. That was attack attack. That oh, was like a harpoon yeah. again. That was like a digital harpoon. Oh, no, I was gonna, I was gonna, yeah, say like... Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, okay, but before anything else happens, that Hornet needs to make, I believe it's an engineering save, to clear burn. Yeah. Um, I should remember this, but let me just double check that. 99% yeah. sure it's engineering. It's engineering. All right. Okay, so... Get the Hornets engineering up here. Um, so this is this needs to be to ten. It doesn't. Uh, the it, Hornet, sucker. the Hornets pilot makes a terrible screaming sound over comms as the the like armored suit of the Hornet frame just burns away. Oh, oh, oh my um, God! I. This, I, yeah, I think it's basically like a couple system is just like, ah, fuck! And like a couple <laughs> like ammo pouches explode, like something burns out on the back of it. Uh, and it just oh, kind of drifts away. He's dead. <laughs> Davy Jones is just like, man, he's sticking around there for a long time. <laughs> You're jammed, we can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, also. A note, it is possible that pilots can survive their mech being destroyed. Out in space, that's extremely less likely, especially if you died from burn. That's very rough. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Good job, the Elite is out. So, uh, three units left to go. So, the, oh catafr the cataphract is going to move this one down here. Oh, no. I am going to name Vector Cataphract 2. It looks like an S Cavalier. Name it's sibling vector cat or mercenary cataphract one. They're friends. They're friends. Two of them. Two of them. <laughs> two of them. Great, now there's two of them. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, alright. So this cataphract is the cataphracts are not slowed, so this cataphract <laughs> is going to move. Eight. And then it is going to what we got here. And Patch has just been chilling down there all by himself for a while. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, Patches. 
Yeah, well, like zoom, and then everyone was like, "No, let's go this way." Well, you're not gonna be al you're not gonna be alone for long because the cataphract uh, does like an armored core boost at you and through you. Um, okay. Patch, give me a hull save made at one difficulty. All right. And your He's save target to is twelve. He's about to do the nothing personal kid thing and slice you in you gotta teleport behind you first, right? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Oh, we did. I assume if I have zero points in hole, there's no modifications. It's that, other than difficulty. That is correct. Alright. We believe in you. No! I, I, I didn't oh, believe so. hard enough. Oh, you didn't believe hard enough. Okay. I forgot well, that's, to believe. I'm sorry. That's the entire move. Um, One sec. Alright, so you take two kinetic damage from the cataphract passing through you. Uh, okay. So that is not armor piercing, so I'm armed accordingly. Yep. Uh, I will oh, it's that. not ar oh, armor. Oh, armor, right? It is not armor piercing. <laughs> yes, you have armor. the 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 attack that I had the witch make against you via Davy Jones was armor piercing, but uh, okay. you do have armor otherwise. Yeah. Um, okay, so you take damage from it passing through you, like, as it comes up to you, like, that one arm that it has the shield on, I think the shield is, like, strapped to its forearm rather than holding it, so what you see is this thing charging at you, like, you know, a fucking emu from Joust, and then at the last second it lifts that arm up, and instead of, like, doing something with the shield, it just reaches out and, like, grabs your frame. Uh, you are now grappled by the cataphract. I'm guessing that at no point... Did it prompt a reaction because of its cool charge thing? Uh, no. Well, yeah. um, what reaction do you have in mind? Like an Overwatch? Yeah, like, you know, it threat range. Um, it sword. not unless it started within your threat range. Ah, okay. Uh, so you are grappled now, which is going to complicate your ability to move. Yep. Sure will. <laughs> hmm. All right, so that's, that is Cataphract 2's turn. Cataphract 1 is going to take its turn. Cataphract 1 taking its turn. What will it do? Cataphract 1 is going to move here. And... It's it's gonna do the same thing to uh, to deer. All right. Well, the good news is because uh, wait, um, I have something. Zoop. Uh, s stable. No. Uh, it, oh, it's isn't it? Didn't we say uh, because of my antlers? I can check the actual mech page. Uh, because of my antlers, I get plus one accuracy on pull checks. We did uh, say I, that. Yes. Cool. So this is just a flat zero then. Uh, yes, yeah, so double check that. Yes, that is that's just a regular hull check. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, big whammy zero and hull. No, big whammy. Uh, regrettably, you are also grappled. Okay, so the, yeah. the cataphract passed through you, so you also take two uh, kinetic damage. Got it, Mark Gordon. The correct spot on the map. What? Is Cataphract 1 in the correct spot? Is it supposed to be adjacent to Deer? Uh, no. Deer is supposed to be adjacent to it. Oh, oh. Got it. So it got dragged. <laughs> oh, man, so yeah, bad. again, this is, this is like, as it, as it goes by you, it, like, reaches out, I think, like, <laughs> grabs one of the antlers and drags you with it. Uh, yes, when you are grappled, the party oh, that has, like, dominance in the grapple, if you will, uh, usually the larger party, uh, can move it, the grappled party, with it. Oh. Um, so you're either gonna have I... to... You're either going to have to slap these things or break the grapple on your turn. God, I'm not sure. Oh, God, I, I had a plan, but that just threw the whole plan into the chaos. Um, okay, so that leaves the mercenary scout. Uh, and the scout is going to stand where it is. And it's just going to target Davy Jones. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. And I also get disadvantage on on everything, right? Uh, yes. Cool. Okay, it's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna pop a cloaking field. It is now invisible. Mm. 
Um, can still be targeted, but remember, it just that just means that if you decide to attack it, you have to coin flip to see if you're allowed to make that attack. Um, it is going to target you, Davy Jones. This is the marker rifle that it's using, so it's it is it is painting you with a target lock now. So this is a smart weapon. This is against your e defense. Well, I mean, it's, so I'm pretty sure. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe the immense heat you're emitting in space will throw it off. Maybe. Maybe. I believe. All right. Type the thing in, and nothing's happening now. Maybe if we get the deer Did I type that wrong? This is not the roll. This is me making sure D20. Okay. Uh, yeah, we roll, did it, boys. Roll, 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 28, <laughs> roll 28 a roll for some reason. Was it a good roll? I, I don't know. It never appeared. I oh, pressed it just it. didn't show you? Got it. Yeah, no, I, I pressed enter. Roll. I pressed it's enter and it vanished. Well, well yeah. I, I guess it's fine. You have that. Yeah. Okay, oh, that one is. Oh, oh my god. All right. Um, so just to, to sack on now, uh, Maloney, you are locked onto, and while you are locked onto, you are also shredded and can't hide or become invisible. That's fun. Let's just That's zoom in. Let's just here. zoom in on the nice stack of uh, statuses and conditions that Davy Jones has racked up here. Well, at least you know the the hornet's gone. Get your elite ass out of here. Yeah, but Ev everything is happening to Davy Jones. All right, yeah. uh, that's that's the round. So we roll over now to player turn. All uh, right. If you guys let Charlton go first, I can I can overshield Davy Jones and try to save him. Well, so among most, other things. Well, so I'll say that most of this goes away at the end of the turn. The only thing it doesn't is the lock on and stuff. And I'm definitely not going to try and be become exposed for this turn because like that. So uh, if I go first. Then I'm like, just with the knowledge, even at the end of my turn, like, I don't want to be exposed out here for too long. Because those cataphracts or that witch decides, hey, you know what, I'm feeling funny today. Then, like, that's it. <laughs> well, if you're going to take care of the witch, I guess, then go ahead, yeah. No, so the only thing I'll be able to do is make an improvised attack. So I was going to try and run up to that harpoon and, uh, or begin running up to that harpoon and, uh, and start improvised attacking hits. Oh. Um, if you want to go first, though, that's fine. Okay, um, so you're you're just running away from the scout, basically? Yeah, I would just be trying to get out of range. And, because at, at the end of this turn, I'm going to be normal person, except I'll have a lock on. And that's okay. it. So, yeah, you will you will have that lock on. You will still be shredded because of that lock on, but all that means is you don't benefit from that one armor. Yeah, as opposed to being silenced, being uh, being exposed, and being impaired. Yeah. I'll, okay. Yeah, I'm on. It's yeah, pretty I'll fucked up. Mind. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in hell right now. So if you don't mind, I'd like to go. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I'm just gonna move. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, and uh, I'm gonna boost. Or wait, is an improvised attack a full action? Uh, let me, I was just actually about to pull that up. It's a quick action, I'd like to, i like to slam my, um, my fragile, heated mech fist. Or boom. Um, oh, that's very handy, it actually lists here, hey, here's what counts as an attack. Okay, so apparently quick tech does count as an attack, so a lock-on does count as an attack. I didn't know that last time, so, uh, you benefit from that, and I'm not gonna change it. An improvised attack is a full action, yes. Okay, well then, I'm just gonna boost and go one, two, three, four, five. Alright. Good. You are in full cover now from anything on the other side of that block. Yeah, and I'm also going to, uh... Oh, I guess I can't take off statuses, but... I'll, I'll take off statuses. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, anything cool. else? That's my whole turn. I and I am going to elect Charlottesen because I think it sounds like you're about to just go off this next turn. And I really want to see what your guy does. Okay, uh, you can't communicate, but it looks like you're safe to me. So I will I will change course if you're going to take care of the harpoon. Yeah. Now um, that we have offensive pressure. Yeah, Charlton, yeah. bear in mind you do still need to free yourself from that uh, from that harpoon through your foot. That is true. Well, oh, if I do this I carefully, I won't have to move, so it's fine. Fair enough. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Folks, you love to hear that. How coming ominous. from the, coming from the, the drone operator. This is a very yeah, the very hydra. That's a very hydra neck thing to say. Yeah, if I do this right, I actually don't have to move. <laughs> yeah. What if what if I didn't move? Hmm. Am I still shredded then? Uh, just... Yes, you are shredded and immobilized until you you or someone adjacent to you performs, okay. I believe it was a full save as a full action to remove that. As a full uh, action. Okay. Yep. We probably could have tried that. No, you're all fucked up right now. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Go be over there in full cover. That's fine. I'm happy go, here. Yeah, go be not exploding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Mercenary Cataphract 1 is going to take its turn first. I am going to double-check something about grappling. Okay. Do you have a rule about this, Cataphract? Yeah, I actually have questions about how to get out of grapple, but until it's my turn, or mine or um, Patch's turn, I don't think it's relevant yet. Alright, so as a free action, so to answer the question that you have, um, in a grapple, the smaller party becomes immobilized but moves when the larger party moves, mirroring their movement. If both parties are the same size, either can make a contested hull checks at the start of their turn. Uh, the winner counts as the larger than the loser until the contest is repeated. So, because Patch, you, and the Cataphract are the same size, you are both size one, it is, and this is a free action that you can use, you don't have to like spend a quick action to do this, it is going to make a contested hull check against you. Yep. So we both roll a hull check. Higher one wins. Ooh. And, ooh, not good for the cataphract. I'm the captain now. All right. So <laughs> it it is not allowed to move you. No. Which is good for you. It is. Because you can probably look three tiles below you and guess what I would have done if it was allowed to move you. Oh yes. Oh, drag you, you drag yeah. you through rocket hell. <laughs> Ooh. Um, but it doesn't get to because you rolled super good. Okay, so it's just going to, uh... And actually, it sort of sounds like I get, I can move, I'm the larger party, so I can move it. Um, so you have to, hang on one sec. I think it has to be on your Oh, turn yes, you wait. Win again. The winner counts as the larger party, the winner counts as larger than the loser until the contest is repeated, so yes, you count as larger. Yeah. I've I've always like internalized that as like you have to repeat it on your turn, but it does say the winner counts as larger than the loser until the contest is repeated. So you are the captain now. And, and I'm not gonna repeat the contest on my turn. Okay, that's that is that. valuable information. Well, it's it's just gonna start by skirmishing you with uh with this thing. Um, is going to use its ram cannon in the melee pattern. So that's no uh no difficulty because it's using it as a melee weapon. This is against your evasion. Do you apply any difficulty to this attack? I don't think so. I don't think soft cover applies anything to melee attacks, does it? Um, that's a great question. I don't think it does, but let me double check. I think for cover you have to be able to draw a line that goes between the cover and you, but he's adjacent, so I imagine cover wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Right. There's well, also man. well, there's yeah, there's also the weird thing of this is magic cover. Yeah, it's it's magic cover nonsense. So it's doesn't doesn't exist simultaneously. But... Anytime a target is obscured or obstructed somehow, it has soft cover, adding to ranged attacks. Okay, so yes, yeah, this, okay. since this is a melee pattern, since it's using it in like its melee configuration, it it they the book describes the ram cannons as being like a weapon that can be used either as a melee weapon or a ranged pattern weapon. So what I, inter I interpret that as is like the Valkyria Chronicles lance-shaped rocket launchers. Yep. Where you could just like charge at you and stab you with this thing, then turn around and like, you know, fire a giant slug out of it. Anyways. So this is against your evasion. No. Definitely does not hit. Okay. Well, it's just going to make a, a regular ass uh, invade tech attack against you then, because I didn't think to use and consume a lock on there. So uh, this is against your E-defense. 
Okay, yeah, that hits. All right, uh, you take two heat and are in <laughs> impaired and slowed until the end of your next turn, and that's it. All right. Let me double check that. Yes, you are impaired and slowed until the end of your next turn. You are. Also, I need to change. Need to change this around. One sec. Impaired. Uh, where's that? Slowed. They're slowed. Uh, I'm going to remove this little fist for grapple and put the little fist for grapple on the cataphract. <laughs> and that's NPC turn. Okay, so then I am next. Yeah. I will activate the Shepherd drone protocol and move my drones four spaces if it's within sensors. Basically, a free action. Um, and then I will activate my core system. Oh. Ooh. Popping it. Which, uh, which means I need three more drones on the field Shredder, Snare, and Hunter. Come right up, boss. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um... What is your core system? Um, can you provide information about how much uh, HP they should have? They should all have 16. Fantastic. Also, just as a reminder, uh, Patch has a turret stuck to their face. Yes. Oh, I forgot about that. I, All right. Nothing's happened where it could fire. Right. <laughs> so. But it is something. Uh, something may happen soon. So let us yeah. let us remember that it is there. All right. Um, yes. You should have control of these drones. These little bad boys here. Great. You may redeploy to space within sensors. Okay. Are deployed to separate points within sensors. Got it. Okay. So I get to put these anywhere I want within my sensors. Holy shit. Um, what is your sensors? My sensors are 10. Yeah, uh, sensors are huge. not bad. <laughs> sensors yeah. are extremely not bad. Um, I mean, 10 is still not bad, like, at all. This is welcome to, like, why this map is huge because, like, the challenge of, like, all right, so on the one hand, making a map huge introduces all these sorts of challenges, but on the other hand, 10 both is and is not a lot of distance. See also that tutorial fight, which was like, turned out to kind of be a night fight in a phone booth, where it's like, well, most of you can shoot across literally the entire battlefield, so. <laughs> Me just hey. sitting in the back, barely moving, fire. <laughs> so, I have a question. Is the most funny thing where you yes. just kind of like razor blade, razor blade. The answer is probably no, but that's fine. So, for the Drone Commander level 3 quick action, Invigorate. It says, hostile. Ca so you draw lines between drones and allied targets. Yes. Uh, allied targets get overshield four. Hostile targets in the lines path take two energy damage. If I can make a line go over a single target twice, will they take four energy damage or no? Um, I don't. Each character can only be. Okay, wait. I'm not looking at invigorate. I'm looking at something else. It does not specify. I'll double check, but I'm gonna. Up. I'm gonna assume. No, because otherwise then you could just bounce back and forth between two targets forever until one of them exploded. You can't use the same target again. Okay. So wait, hang on. Read. Uh, sorry, uh, repeat the question. In that case. So, so assuming can't... I can only hit each allied character slash drone once, if I draw multiple lines through an enemy, a hostile target, will they take two damage per individual line that goes through them, or just two damage oh, once. Oh, you mean, will they take damage if you can jump from a friendly target to a friendly target with the line, like, going past them? Uh, okay. Yes. Um, one good question. I mean, take a S look Several here. times. It's, it's, it's explicit that they can happen at least once. 
Um, but. where the heck is the Invigorate Quick Action listed? Oh, that's probably your talus. Why am I looking at Hydra? Yeah, Drone Commander 3. Why am I looking at Hydra? <laughs> Let me go to Drone Commander 3. Because that makes perfect sense to look okay, at Hydra. That's true. Invigorate. <laughs> quick Action, you may send a pulse of energy. You may extend the pulse from your target to another character, sending the line to them as long as they're within three, and you may continue extending the line. Da, 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 da. Well, you don't have to see. Allied characters in the line's path gain four over shield. Hostile characters take four damage instead. Mm. Does yours say four? Mine says two. Oh, mine says four. Weird. Four energy damage? Really? No, I should check. I, it says yeah. Mine says four over shield, and then it thinks the line's path that take two energy damage. I should probably check to me. So I'm so I'm going on a copy of, the, the, of this I downloaded a while ago. I should check if there are errata. Um, well, the the PDF that I have and CompCom both say two. So I was planning on weird. two. Weird. That's probably been errata then. Let's go with that then. Um, two energy. Okay. Yes. I'm I'm gonna say it is being in the lines path applies that you t uh, you take two damage condition to it. So. That is. The multiple evil. lines will cause it to take multiple damage? No, multiple lines will not cause it to take multiple damage. Okay. Poopy. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't really change too much. Yeah. Because uh, um, I'm still going to invigorate anyway. Yep, alright, so just tell me, tell me who you're invigorating and I'll, I'll put a little thing on them. So everyone... Can I... How do I do this? I'm Here. gonna use these things are invigorated. I don't know. Can you see that box that I drew or no? Um, I can. Hold on. Draw a shape. Boop. Okay. Everything in there is invigorated. Uh, yes. All the friendly things are invigorated, and then the cataphract will take two energy damage. All right. Uh, I'll mark the energy damage for that, but I'm gonna use the blue bar for everyone as overshield. So should I on my sheet should I just add four overshield then? Yes. Oh, sorry, two. It's it's two overshield, right? Oh, two. two. It's four overshield. Four overshield and two energy damage. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Nice. All right, cool. Yeah, I, I assume really, I that check Hydra Arata. gets that as well, right? I because it comes so. from Hydra. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check that in a second, but I would assume as much. Nice. I really do appreciate that overshield. I'm still looking fine health wise, but definitely helps. And I know overshield doesn't stack, so like if I do another four overshield, they don't get eight. But if they have taken damage, um, will that replenish it? That makes sense to me. Okay, that's. I was thinking that. I was like, I don't, it doesn't yeah. say. Okay. No, that that makes sense. That makes that makes an amount of sense that I am in, in agreement with. All right. Okay. Like, that's how temporary hit points work, and just that. I've so. marked overshield and damage. Cool. Um, that is two quick actions. Which I believe I could boost and take another single quick action. Uh, you could overcharge and take another quick action if you wanted. It's overcharge, that's what it is. Also, bear in mind, overcharge does not clear un until you have a. Uh, Full until you have a full repair. So basically, until you have a full rest, your overcharge will still be there. Right. That's what I, that's what I was thinking. But thank you for clarifying that. It's not to say don't use it. Just bear in mind that the longer the mission goes on, uh, the more heat you will take for overcharging. Yeah. I think that's enough. Well, All right. I'll end my turn and elect. Uh. Deer and Patch, what are your plans? Both are in. Patch is in a little bit more precarious of a position because he's not surrounded by friendly drones. Yeah, uh, your, your call on that. Uh, if I can win my grapple, I'm going to try to do something to the witch. If it stays there. But, Patch, if you want to go, you're in a worse spot than me. Is Patch with us? Oh, Patch is muted. Uh, he might have walked away for a moment. Okay, it might be oh, okay. I, I forgot I was muted. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Glad going, I, I think I got a plan, and it would be nice to go before someone can blow me the hell up. Yeah, go. All right. Patch is nominated for next. All right. Um, I will note that the the uh, rocket spots only apply to hostile mechs, so they can only damage you. But 
Um, oh, they all... Oh, dang it, you saw my plan. I did specifically uh, check because I figured someone would try it. Oh, I won't. Okay, okay, just, thank you. Just, I mean, We're just to be crafty. safe. The, the, the text is... Uh, the next time a hostile character moves through Sarsa Attorney, etc., etc., one of the chosen spaces. So it does specifically call out hostile characters, not a character. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying. I can still do something on my next turn. But... Yeah. Um, All right. Um, yeah, I believe that's my turn. I could move the drones if I wanted after I deploy them, but that's I don't need to. They're All right. Good like that. Uh, well, Mercenary Cataphract 2 is going to go next, and it is going to make a contested hull check against you, Deer, to see if it can drag you around. Cool. Unfortunately for it, I have one accuracy. Wait, one though. or two? Uh, one. Okay. Which is this one up here, because two yes. tried to drag Patch around and was unsuccessful. That's okay. what I thought. I thought All right. it... Hull check, accuracy, oh, plus okay, one... Hey, that's pretty pretty all right um okay. i appear to have rolled a 20. oh i see that well never mind i'm just dragged fellas <laughs> you thought you thought I didn't, um, I didn't see your roll i was like oh 13's okay we, for me we did roll <laughs> well, at the same time yeah um all right it's uh, going anyway to... before it does oh. that though uh I, i'm using my reaction for the hunter and snare drones oh yes tell me what uh, those do this, you it's may force characters move. at the start of their turn adjacent to this drone or move adjacent for the first time to make a system save. On failure, oh. they receive lock-on, and for the snare, they're immobilized for an agility save. Oh. Okay. Right. Well, I'll make the system save first, then. Um, what is my save target? You are uh, the save target. Hydra's is just 11, yes? Yes, okay. 11. Thank you. Alright, so this is systems. That succeeds. So does does anything still happen to it, or does it avoid that effect? Uh, it doesn't say anything else happens, so I assume it's just not locked on. Okay, and what was the second one? Agility save. Uh, on a failure, they become immobilized. All right. This is an agility save. That fails extremely. He's immobilized. Uh, so yeah, the cataphract, as a matter of fact, cannot drag you around. It's it still counts <laughs> as the larger party. You have to break that grab. So yes, if you are the larger party, you may break the grapple, I believe. Um, okay. But it can't drag you around now, because <laughs> it's it's immobilized. Um, if it wants to move, it can make another agility save as a quick action, uh, or if I move the drone away from it, or if the drone's destroyed. You know what? Yeah, it's going to try that quick action, so hang on. That overshield is going to be very helpful in, in a worse case scenario. Would they get it? It doesn't say on their next turn or anything, but would they be able to do that on their same turn? Um, I think so, but it counts as a quick action now rather than just oh, being forced true. to make yeah. a save. Okay. okay, so this is its agility save to try to break free of that. Alright. Okay, so it does only get the one quick action. Uh, it's in the middle of a lot of things here. Alright. <laughs> it is going to move. He's going to move on to Deer and then up this way. Five spaces. Yep. So, Deer, you get dragged. Doop, 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 doop. Yep. Oop. Through there. That consumes the the rocket. Um, hit me. A rocket does hit you. That is six kinetic damage. Oh, thank God for that overcharge. I'm still over half, but... wow. Or I actually, I'm just... Turn. I am just under half. Um... All right, I got some stuff I can try. All right, and it's just going to try to slap you with the... Oh, also, I've been forgetting I need to roll to recharge that action. Nope, doesn't recharge. Um, it's just going to try to slap you with the ram cannon. Um, so do you apply any difficulty? Do you or any of these drones apply any difficulty to deer? These drones also, do not. Okay, also, I forgot. I need to give you 4 HP back, deer, because you had overshield. Yes. So you're at 11 uh, out of 15 and, now? Uh, well, no, I, I, I'm at 7 out of 15 because I got hit earlier. For oh. Four. Or, not for... I, I'm at 7 now, so... Okay. I've been keeping track. Okay, 7... All right, so you should seven. have only taken 2 damage from the last thing. Yes, I did. Yes. I was at 9. I, yeah, had, do you I have, had... Do you have armor? 
I had not counted. I had not counted the damage from earlier. I was the only one to get hit by the Rainmaker earlier, so I got hit pretty bad. I got hit for like six damage on that, so. All right. Um, so this is this is against your evasion, dear. Oof. What is it? What is? Oh. Uh, That's a twenty-two. Hmm. That hits. Yeah. I guess that hits. I'll yeah. Allow it. Fortunately, and most NPCs cannot crit, so that's just damage. But that is five kinetic damage. Still up. And that's NPC turn. All right. Did you say what's next? That's me. So, right. so as the larger mech, I'm allowed to break grapple. So this is a little weird. You count as the larger mech, but it does say a grapple ends when either character breaks adjacency, such as that they're knocked back by another effect. The attacker chooses to end the grapple as a free action, or the defender breaks free by succeeding on a contested hull check as the quick action. Um, so you count as the larger party, but I think you still have to make a contested hull check to break free. Um, however, quick action. Yeah. However, right now you do drag the cataphract around with you whenever you move. If you okay. move it to the Shredder Drone, it can be shredded before you attack it. Where the hell is the Shredder Drone? The Shredder yeah. Drone's way far away. Yeah, yeah no, it's too far to catch. Sorry. That's okay. I'm impaired and slowed, so that ain't that dog don't hunt. Uh, but I am going to make use of the aforementioned uh, free stabilize here. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to use that to repair my hole. Um, and I should be able to clear impaired, I believe. Uh, yes, you may. And clear one condition. Clear one condition? Yes. Cool. So you can clear the impaired. I will mark you. I will take one, uh, nope. Take one repair and replenish your HP. All right. Already paid so off. Let's, let's have the, the mercenary cataphract just come down here with me. Zoopy. Yeah, that works. Um, and I'm not impaired anymore. Nope. Cool. So I'm going to swing at this harpoon. Which does still have a lock on on it. Yep, yep I and I'm going to consume that. You. Is that uh, with a... Are you using a melee weapon for that? Yep. Great. Then engagement does not matter. Yep. Uh, D6 plus... We get one for grit, right? That's how yes. That, works? that is correct. Yep. Yeah, sorry. If I've not mentioned that, do remember to add your one for grit. Um, well, right. its evasion is 10, so that hits. All right, so I get 2d6 plus 1, I believe. Let me confirm that. Yeah, on it. Oh, is and that then... your heavy melee? Yes, that is yeah. 2d6 plus 1. Sick. That's 11, baby. Harpoon destroyed. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, and for executioner? Ah, no. Um because there's someone else adjacent to me, I can make a, a backswing attack Ooh. Um, against the cataphract. It's a free action. Slap that uh, cataphract. Yeah, it, it deals half damage if it hits, but, you know. It's free. Probably doesn't hit. It. Probably does not hit. So I'm guessing, wait, so so there's a, a, there's a break adjacency thing? Is, is a rule of... There is. There is an action you can take okay. to... Well, there's... Um, hang on. I'm guessing break I can't use oh, for grapple. Break... Or lock breaker. Um, let me check that. Because break adjacency means, like, if involuntary movement pushes you away, that breaks a grapple. Okay. Um, but let me check skirmisher lock breaker really quickly. Just to be sure. Yeah, it says it doesn't... It, it says you may move... But it doesn't say... And like, yeah, it ignores engagement, but uh, you are grappled. That does. So yeah, that does not break adjacency. Alright. Um, well, mm, mm, let me check that. If they're knocked back it's, it's, by it's, another it's, effect. It is a little bit weird that I can pull them around, but actually can't leave them. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say you can use Lockbreaker to, to break that grapple because I think that's cool. Alright. I'm just gonna spin gracefully away. I'm still slowed, so it's not really a, a whole lot that I can do with that. 
other than, oh, what are my other quick actions, actually? I should have checked that. Uh, well, worst case. Yeah, you know what? This guy wants to go. Uh, I kind of spin away from him. And then lock on. I lock on to the cataphract. Let's stand. All right. Um, so, again, because I did check it, that does, in fact, so a lock on counts as a quick tech, so that does break your integrated chaff launchers and breaks your soft cover. But also I is lock on. So. Also, you skirmish, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I also hit a thing with a sword. You do remember that part, right? <laughs> you remember the part where I hit a thing with a big oh, wait, sword? That, wait, why does that. I, wait, wait, lock on doesn't benefit the chaff launchers? Lock on, lock on breaks the. So I'm going by page. Uh. Up, up. Where were attacks in here? I'm going by page 64 in the book where it says mechs, at, mech, mechs attack using the skirmish barrage, quick tech, full tech, and improvised uh -oh. attack actions. Okay. Um, so I'm, inter gotcha. I'm interpreting that as a quick tech counts as an attack, thus a. I, the way I've heard the phrase is like, does this imply a hostile condition on another character? If uh, yes, okay. it's an attack. Um, but again, I didn't think of that before, so you get to have that. If, here's the thing about me, about the GM. If the GM forgets something, you just get that for free. It's true. It's my job to remember these. Yeah, it, it's it, it's my yeah, job so to remember these things. Don't fucking snitch, kids. Also, does the drone <laughs> attach to me do anything in my skirmish frenzy? Oh yeah, it uh, could if shoot If you land an enough. attack, it gets three kinetic damage. Oh no, I didn't land an attack on that guy, and the other one wouldn't be relevant. Well, does it have to be on the thing that the does it does it? Uh, no, it's no. it's the target. That was attacked. Okay, so it cannot attack a separate Allied target. character within range 10 of a turret drone makes a successful attack. Effect the turret drone deals 3 kinetic damage to their target. Okay, so that does not count. Alright, um, well, Patch, anything else? Uh, Patch? Oh, Mike sorry, that's... Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was making sorry, sure I was making sure I hadn't lost like internet or something. Alright, cool. That's, no, that's my that's my turn. Alright. That means I'm up next. So that does that means you're up next. Um The scout's gonna go next. Time to oh. find out if I'm in range of the scout. <laughs> yeah, right. To be honest, that's probably in range of the scout. Yeah. A twenty. I'm sure, what? The, I'm sure the scout's got a big gun. Um. The scout's gonna move. The scout can't move very far, but it's gonna move. Oh, All right. Oh, now it's coming. Now it's in range. Okay, and it's going to target Charlatan. So Charlatan, this is smart. So this is versus your E defense. Do you apply any difficulty to this? Would you say I'm sorry? Charlatan. This is against you. Oh. So, uh, yeah, RDY. If it's a ranged attack, then it gets difficulty, otherwise not. All right. Uh, well, it's smart, but it is ranged. So, that does remove one of these accuracies. This is against your E defense. That beats A16. It, yes. Okay. Um, in that case, you are locked on. Um, you're already shredded, so that doesn't do anything to you. But you cannot hide or become invisible. I'm going to send one of your drones to the back of what? this, the, like, stacking of tokens here, because I literally cannot click on your icon. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, uh, fortunately, you can arrange, like, what order things are stacked in Roll20, yeah. so I can say, like, okay, you go to the back so I can click the thing underneath you. Yeah, it's nice. Um, and that's all the scout's going to do, so it is now player turn. Alright, cool. Uh, this is going to be quick and easy because I got 2 HP. So I am uh, I can just lock on to something next to me, right? Yep. Alright, cool. Your rule says you can't just be like, I lock on to you and then I slap you. <laughs> Alright, cool. Let's find out if this works. So, uh, oh boy. If this doesn't, if this doesn't work, uh, I think I'm losing a structure. So I... Uh, I just turn the head of the Minotaur toward with the with the extra pair of antlers towards the cataphract to lock on. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a quick tech invade 
Uh, something I talked about doing to allies, I can obviously do to enemies, so I'm gonna try to fold space. Ooh. Uh, Whoa. and I'm gonna just gonna roll and see what this happens. So I'm gonna instantly consume lock on, uh, which gives me the one accuracy, and this is a tech attack. Um. All right. So yeah, dog. A couple Hold things on. happen. Let me get the stream back to the uh, back to the game screen so everyone can see that twenty on the tech attack. Yes. So, and I realized something last time that I didn't do, but it doesn't really matter because it's dead now. Um, so first of all, when I once again with hacker, uh, the target chooses to either take two heat or be pushed three spaces in a direction of your choice. Oh, okay. Uh, it's gonna take that heat. All right, cool. So that's two heat, and because it's an invaded, it already gets another heat. All and right. Also, uh, when you hit, uh, this is a passive of the Minotaur. When you hit with the tech attack, you may activate the system, causing your target to be slowed until the end of their next turn. All right, so but they are slowed until the end of their next turn as well. More importantly, important. they're gone. Until the start of their next turn, they're gone. All right, so they are now um, off the so, field. Okay, sorry. Was the first condition where they was it slowed? Or yes. impaired. Okay, so they, they are, are slowed. They are slowed. They are also gone. Uh, which, boy, what's a good one to use for this shit? You just slip them into a dimensional pocket? Is that what happened? Yes. Guess, yeah. And more importantly, I'm probably not grappled anymore. No, because they have disappeared from the battlefield. Uh, you are in, That does, in fact, break the grapple. L. Yeah. So, there's some people who use force movement, some people group force it, some people just fold their opponent into space temporarily. Uh, and yeah. then, um, I... Oh jeez, I'm so scared of that witch. Um... Which one of these is your guardian drone? Um, okay, so that I'm That is the gonna... one... Oh, you see it. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I'm going to move right here. Um... So, I might want to go again after this. If I, if I live this turn, because I'm not sure. Uh, well, question, DM. Yes. Uh, if I'm right here, am I able to hide beneath the structure? Or do I have to be right where I paint? Um, you can hide right there because you are within cover there. Okay. Um, you are I in cover there, so you can spend an action to hide. Okay, well, I don't have any actions left, so unfortunate. Okay. Um, but yes, as long as as long as you have something that can break line of sight, which I interpret as like if you can get behind full cover, you could use that to hide. Okay. Uh, well, I have hide anyways. I just couldn't, I just am out of quick tech action. Oh yeah. Uh, so I guess I'm just gonna sit next to the guardian drone and hope that the witch does not have any good like hitting stuff that can hit me with a minus one accuracy. Uh, and if I can go. With Again, sometime soon I might be able to do something to the witch, but I don't know yet. Okay. But that's my turn. Um, alright. <laughs> oh, I guess that's the end of the, the overall turn too, so let's talk real quick. Uh, once yeah. we go next, uh, because potentially if Davy Jones just gets up and running and kills that harpoon, that means it's game over for the mission. Correct. Yeah, that seems, let's, let's do that. Um, well, I am, I am imposing the GM ruling of you, well, I was going to impose the GM ruling of you do have to last the round at that point, but uh, I, never mind, actually. Fuck that. It's it's nearly midnight. Uh, I will, so yeah, if, I you, will if you throw a the, the mission's over. Or the uh, I, I will over. Say, uh, I will say uh, I would be able to help out on that roll by just giving a lock on if you really wanted. Uh, if I could go again after this. Because then I could hide, and then I would be no liability to anybody. I'm cool with that. I'll also save some fun. Sure. Um, but in this position, I can actually. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Um. Well, I mean, if you think you can just kill it. Yeah, I can. Just, I'm, I mean, I can. I mean, if I don't roll like trash, then yeah, I think I'll be able to kill it. Okay. But um. I also rolled three ones in a row earlier, so do what you will with that information. Oh jeez. Uh, what what is what do you two think? Uh, RDY and T Jobs. I'm good with that plan. Yeah, that works for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Which part of the plan? Him going first or me going first? Oh, you going first to get the lock on and then... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, then I, yeah. and I just... I, I realized I ended my turn in range 20 of the cannon, so that really sucks. 
Oh. But it's a ranged attack, so... It, it is a ranged attack. attack, so... But yeah, mm. let's... Yeah, I will be... I will be honest, but yeah. Maybe it'll try to blow up the drones, I don't know. Alright, um... Well, in that case, the witch is going to go next. Uh, so, Deer, I believe you were the one that it targeted with that thing that gave you heat, correct? Uh, way back at the start of this combat? Uh, I... I the only heat I have gotten is for myself. No, that was Davy Jones. Oh, no, you're right. That was Davy Jones. Okay. No, Wait. no, it, it, was, it was Charlatan, yeah. Oh, yeah, Charlatan, yeah, you have one. I got... Yes. Yeah, because I got hit with that nasty... You got a bunch of other heat, thing. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so Charlatan, you took one heat, which means you were hit with Teardown. So you take, uh, you now, at the start of the, the Witch's turn, you take four heat. Forgot about that. Okay, oh, I take four heat. Dude, yes. Four. Okay. So I'm at five out of six. It says Danger Zone. What? Um, that just, unless you have any particular talents or uh, enemy hits you with an attack that applies, where the Danger okay. Zone applies, it doesn't mean anything. Narratively, it okay. means your mech is visibly hot. Yeah. Okay. And... I'm hot now. Yeah. Yeah, like you're if you've ever played like the Battletech PC game, it's like when your mech is overheating and like the mech yeah. looks red hot. It's that. Alright, uh so the witch is up. The witch is going to move one, two, three, four to here. Actually it's gonna move five to take a step. Five, six to take a step back. Um the witch is not an assault mech, it's not going to get in your face, it's just going to get close to you. Um, all right, and it is going to, so I forgot I need to roll for recharge. Does not recharge that. Okay. Um, let's check the heat situation. Okay. Uh, Deer, this is an attack by the witch against your E-Defense. All right, well, hey, that's good, because also it gets the minus one accuracy because of the Guardian Drone. And my E-Defense is 12. Ah, okay. So, remove that accuracy. Oh no, that accuracy. Oh wait, hang on. Is the, is the, the Guardian Drone is um, for ranged attacks, right? Yeah, I thought we said attack attack. It specifies ranged, ranged attacks. Yes, attack attack okay, is... Okay, well, never mind. Mom. Yeah, a quick attack is an attack, but it is not a ranged attack. Okay, goodbye, everybody. That is <laughs> such a so strange... Long, so long. <laughs> a lot of, lot of movie Yep. It, it, it um, is is. Well, I'm pretty sure that doesn't hit, so you're probably okay. Let's go. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, and then... Oh, I just realized I should have done this the other way around. It's fine. I didn't think of that. Now I'm paying for it. Um, All right. This is a quick tech against you, Charlatan. Do you have... I'm going to do it anyways. Do you no. have anything that... All right. Cool. <laughs> but I'm at 12. E defense. <laughs> that also misses. So that expense. Hey. Okay, so that's a second charge ability expended. Got it. Got nothing for that roll. NPC turn done. Player turn. Oh, nope. Fuck I lied. Reach. It's one. There's one more NPC. <laughs> yep. Um, the rainmaker. Yep. The rainmaker is still just gonna. It's gonna stay here, and it's going to attack uh, deer and patch. But first, save me, save me, guardian drone. But, but first, because it's the start of the turn, all these little rocket markers go away. Yeah! It makes perfect sense. I'm still sad I couldn't drag the witch into it. I had a perfect plan to. <laughs> oh, to drag the witch? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna drag the witch onto one if it were. If like, it I, so I knew. so much movement that you could have done that. I knew well, one because, of you was going to try that. Uh, well, well, essentially, if I wasn't dragged over by the cataphract. That was my plan before the cataphract hit me, and before I found out I couldn't drag it. But oh, okay. essentially, okay. my hacker ability, the witch probably didn't want to be overheated. So I can move it up to three squares, which no then would just to be. Yeah, uh, which then would have guaranteed it going into that last. Uh, or I could have, or I could have just rolled the dice if I wanted that. Patch that is against your evasion, which I believe that... ties. Wait, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was. Sorry. The, yeah, wrong. the last, yeah, the hit. last roll. Okay, so that is a hit against you. Uh, I'm gonna make that same attack against for rolling damage. I'm gonna make that attack against deer, so that we roll damage once. Minus minus one accuracy. Yes. So that is the minus the. That one hit a ten. No. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Um, that is four explosive damage to each of you, not armor oh, piercing. Oh, also. Ow. I forgot to I forgot to apply this last I 
Last time, I forgot that this is reliable and also does knock back one. Uh, but I forgot so... that, so that's your benefit. So, Patch, you are pushed back one. Uh, Deer, you're pushed... No. So, uh, I lost mm -hmm. a structure off of that. Um, We're going to move you up here, Deer. Okay, so it's structure table time. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm I I'm absolutely terrified. Although, um, you could brace. You could decide to brace. Um, well, would that okay? Hang on. Would that matter? How much health do you have? I had two. So. Oh, that would still just yeah, for you. Yeah, I'm. Okay. I'm blasted. I'm blasted. Oh God! All right, I'm All right. Slash roll one d six. Let's get that. For it, no. all right. For system trauma, for it bad. For it's not bad. So um, give me one more uh, d6 roll. You uh, all weapons on one mount of your choice are destroyed, or system no, you, you of have your to, choice. You have to roll another d6. I know. I'm just. Oh please yeah. Please okay, one. Okay, sorry. Oh yeah. My weapons. Fuck. Fuck my weapons. I only got oh. two weapons. Oh. Well, yeah. In that case, yeah. Gone. Okay. So yeah, one to three weapons on one mount of your choice are destroyed. Uh, and you rolled that, so you can you can just throw one of those in the trash. Well, they're on the same mount, so I only have one mount choice, so my machine gun and my pistol are just black. Oh. Like, they're destroyed. I don't well. have any weapons anymore. <laughs> I think during short rest, you can uh, use your repair to fix those. Yeah, and I was I was going to say, like, because it, I was going to say, like, weapons at least, you should get back anyways. There is there is, is going to be a couple hours between here and the azimuth, so you will have time to at least print, like, another assault rifle. Okay. All right. Uh, that is. It's not gonna do anything else. That's NPC turn. God, that was so scary. That was my first time rolling on the structure table. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's just uh, try to end this. So I am going to move one, two, three, four, five. Can't believe you just hacked that. It was like I'm just fucking removing this cataract from the fight. <laughs> I, th I that was the only way out. I did, I don't have anything when they're already on me, and so it's like, well, fuck. I, well, I have a full ability, but I think it's like a once per mission, and so I didn't want to use it yet. Um, but so that means when I'm here, let's just go ahead and lock on to the harpoon for Davy Jones. Um, lock on coming right up, and uh. I guess you can't shoot it. Uh, could I? Could I? Uh, well, let's see. Could I? Could I say I'm like right here? Like, uh, like, could I say like I'm actually right here instead of the full movement? Are you saying you would like to take one tile of movement back? Yes. Yeah, I'll allow it. Don't, don't make a habit I'm... of it. Don't make a habit of it, but I'll allow it. Yeah. Sorry. Um, no, that's cool. It's uh, once uh, again, it is almost midnight, so. Uh, yeah. We're all, we're all getting to the end of it. In that case, I kind of just... I was just going to see if I could do anything else. Actually, actually no. no. I'll, I'll go with my, my previous step. I'll just be good, and I'll just hide. So, okay. just be quick and move along, and then Davy Jones next. Oh, wait, so you can you can just hide in plain sight, right? Yep. All right, well, you're hidden now. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can remove the grapple condition from me, I think. Oh right, I was supposed to do that a while ago, wasn't I? <laughs> no worries. <laughs> you have not been grappled for some time now. <laughs> grappling. Yeah, grappling, correct. <laughs> um. All right. Well, uh, mercenary cataphract one is going to take its turn, and it is going to move up through charlatan so that is two kinetic damage for passing through you um do any of these drones do anything um not those ones okay no it didn't start within like threat range of anything no it's only adjacent got it um well, all right it is going to move through you let me just double check the text on that Yep, that is two kinetic damage, non armor piercing to Charlatan. It's only one damage total. One damage, yeah. Um, but he comes and... out of overshield. Oh, right, you don't even take that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot 
to give you overshield. Okay, so you have three overshield. All right, uh, the cataphract is going to um, attempt to smack you with the... Uh, it's gonna smack you with the uh, ram cannon. So this is against your evasion, which I believe incurs one difficulty. Uh, only ranged attacks. Oh, right, okay. Yep, yeah, this is... So this is melee. Against your evasion? Pretty sure that ah, doesn't misses. hit. Yeah, my All evasion right. is only 8, too, so... Hey... We take those. You do take those. Hey! Ooh. Uh... Uh, all right. Well, it's going to use another quick action. It's going to use charge, which means it is going to move its full speed up to here. Uh, deer that passes through you for two kinetic. Oh, jeez! It knew where I was. It knew where I was at when I was hidden. That sucks. Well, you stopped oh. there. Oh yeah. yeah, that's fair. Oh yeah, that, that's true. totally fair. Um. But now I have to roll... Thank you for reminding me, because now I have to roll a search to find you, which it's going to hey. do. Um, nope. No, it can't, because that's... Sorry. The ability that I used was charge, which is... Cataphract move space is equal to speed in a straight line ignoring reactions engagement, then attacks a target within range with the ram cannon. But it can't attack you because it can't see you. Um, it doesn't take the damage? Deer still takes the damage, but it can't use that attack against him. Um, it oh, can't okay. attack. It can't attack you, Davy Jones, with the ranged, like with the. Uh... Oh no, I can't do that. This lance can be used as either a ranged or a melee weapon, but not both in the same turn. Ah. So it's done. All right, turn... NPC turn over. I'll take it. Dang. Oh, no. powerful. Base five. Good setups. <laughs> I'm so glad I took back what I said and just hit. Yeah, no, that that was strong, actually. That was such a good move. All right, All right Davy I'm Jones, on, you're up. I'm gonna expose myself. I'm gonna uh, select the right cursor, and then I'm gonna move myself. One, two, three, four, here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and barrage it. Um, All right, remember so the lock on. Yep. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna figure out which. How much do I have? Eight. Yeah, I've got to do one of mine to minus one minus to do the charge blade. And which one of you does more damage? One D three plus two, it's a bit more like caps five. It's yeah, I'm gonna strike with the charge blade and the torch. So first the torch. Um which one are you are you using the lock on with the torch? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use the lock on for the torch. Okay. And I would only gain one heat from that. Because, um, I forgot. Does the torch have that exploding dice thing? Um, Just torch does die. have overkill. So if you any dice that land on one cause you to take one heat, then reroll. Oh, okay. So I'm actually going to first. I, I'm actually going to do that with the charge blade first. So we're going to attack. Okay. First. Because if I don't have to take more. I'm like two heat and then it's toast. All right, Fair. so I roll one d twenty, then it'll be plus one for my grit, right? Uh, yes. Don't forget your grit. Are you kidding me? I regret oh, wait, to No, it was no wait. Uh, I used the lock on though, so it's... so I also get. Are you gonna hit with the lock on? Uh, yeah, no. it's a ev it's evasion is ten. So yeah. That... But wait, wouldn't the lock on lock on gives you advantage, right? What accuracy? Yeah. Yes, it gives you accuracy, but that's only plus d6. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well that sec whatever you just I've... rolled now hits. Yeah, torch hits. So, well, please don't roll a one. I mean that's that also crits, so you get to roll uh, highest damage. Oh yeah, so crit is. You got two ones last time, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we forgot to we forgot to do overcharge over overkill for that. Oh well, now we know. Yeah, yeah, I would say I forgot about that. I didn't realize it. Oh, was that yeah. that weapon? Sorry. No, yeah, I, it all of my weapons uh, got a one, and including the one that 
So technically I'm at 90 right now, but whatever, I think. Because then I would have also had to reroll that damage, and then, you know, that's could have gotten ugly. Okay, so you hit, so you, uh, that, that 21 is you hit with the torch? Yeah, this is me hitting with the torch. So All right. Almost, yeah. Yeah, give me that, give me that damage roll. roll. Yeah, I think it's 1d6. 2d6 keep, or 2d6 keep 1, because it's a crit? Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, you're right. And so then it's plus, plus 6? 2d6. Uh, that is plus 3. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no, it, it would be plus 6, because I, uh, I exposed myself. Because it's plus 3, plus 3. Yeah. Oh, I've, where, where's the other plus 3 from? Because uh, you got the plus from, 3 from expose. It's, uh, limit break. Oh, right. So limit break plus the arm armament. So plus six. Wait. Okay, so limit break gives you plus three. What's the other plus three? Oh, limit well. Limit break uh, on, just on the torch. So uh, does ten. Oh, okay. Um. Does that kill it? Oh, right. Yes. Okay, because it because of the burn. Um. Yeah. Ten kills it. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Oh my god. I definitely put it all on the line for that one. I'm at 9 heat, I'm exposed. 9 out of 10 heat. Alright. almost real bad. Oh, can I delete this line? Yes. Okay. Whoop. Nope, don't zoom out the webpage in Firefox. Don't do that. <laughs> Alright. Um, the harpoon breaks 3. Ken shouts, grab onto something, we're pulling free. Uh, retro rockets on the ship fire, pulling you away from the Null Rapport, um, which kind of moves to try to reposition itself. The mechs try to give chase, but uh, before, like, Ken is able to shake them just long enough for the point defense cans to come back online, and they, no one is staying around to fight those. Um, so the Null Rapport kind of caught off guard. Ken peppers it with a, a good burst of the PDCs, knocking out its engine and stranding it, at least temporarily, where it is in space. Um, he hollers for you to grab onto the elevator and come come on back inside. And you set out on a... There are now a couple hours, a few more hours of travel standing between you and arrival at the, at the Azimuth. And that's, I think, where... That is where we call it for the night. Uh, next session will be your arrival at the Azimuth and your descent into the derelict ship. Cool. Nice. Heck yeah. So, real quick... How do we want to um, manage repairs and stuff? Yeah, so you have a short rest now, which means that you can... Let me find the actual page of the book. But you can spend repairs to repair your mechs or replace parts of it. Um, also, I'll say because we did the EVA thing, this is also enough time to swap out uh, systems. So if you want to swap that EVA system for something else, you can. If you want to keep it, you can do that. Is it going to be 0G again, do we know? The next combat is not guaranteed to be 0G. I can guaranteed. Okay. Uh, for heat, do I have to spend repair for that, or does it, can I just? No, your overcharge stays, but your heat goes away. Your heat dissipates. Okay. That's right. what I thought. Um, um I assume so overshield goes. Why away am I too. gonna like? Overshield does go away. So also like, as far as like play or whatever, how do we like save this in CompCon? Like, hey, I'm not done with this. So I believe, second. I believe as long as you don't update your character sheet with like repairs or anything at the end of a battle it will like as long as you when you complete the encounter in active play mode it will give you the option to burn to spend repairs to like spend repairs to repair your mech or replace parts of it um as long as you don't like reset your health or anything that should stay where it is and also i am leaving your characters as they are uh so when i return to CompCon, everything um should be exactly the way it was right Worst case scenario, you're all back at full HP, and I just remember that one of you had structure damage. Yeah. Not him. Um, oh, so tricky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well um, this is this is honestly what I what I get for talking shit in the first fight where I wasn't even damaged really. So. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel any better. Hydra took no no damage at all. That does actually. That's despite probably more important. despite getting fucking impaled. Yeah. Um, he didn't actually lose any HP. Um. So. Because of 
and I'll and I'll fix it on CompCon. So if I spend a one repair, I only get the the um the rifle back, right? Um, I'll have to check on that. I may get back to you on that in the, okay. in the Discord. Um, I'm only I'm only saying that because it says or repaired a destroyed weapon. So I'm since it was technically a mount that has two weapons on it, I was just thinking that it would only be the rifle that comes back. I'm gonna fudge that and say that both come back. Because that's more oh. fun in my because because this is a one shot and that's more fun in my opinion. That is fair. Alright, well I'm gonna spend three repairs just that way I actually have that extra structure then. Sick. Uh, and um, then I have my weapons, and I'll just be down two HP, but that's okay. Oh, uh, I don't lose- I don't- sorry, because that was my first time taking structure. I don't have any stress because of that, because of what I rolled, right? Correct. Stress from heat. Yes, stress cool. is only if you go over your heat capacity. Yeah, cool. Meat or beat. And, right. yeah. All right, I, think, well, I think it is specifically beat, but not relevant at the moment, because no one overheated. Oh, actually- I was really close. It, you were. So. You got. You got up there. <laughs> yeah, because if it was, if it's if it's just beat, then like. I think I. I'll really double check, but I'm pretty sure it's just beat. Do okay. I, Do I hit end mission or do I hit next encounter? Probably just end mission, right? Um. Good. I would. Uh, I might hit end. Combat I might actually just like. Yeah, I would hit end end combat or just like close close your browser and leave it as it is. Um, either way, I I have you also like in the mission tracker in CompCon, so if we'll do like a HP check um, at the start of the next round, and I'll make sure I'll make sure I've got everyone's numbers down. Yeah, I'll just make a note of it myself, so that way in case I forget. It is late though, so if we if there if there's nothing else, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm no, gonna no, peace no. Out. We we do not have to yeah. use tonight, so I'll just say thank yep. you every thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, this is tremendous yes, fun. Yes, thank you everyone. Thank you yeah. all in the chat for coming out tonight. And uh, we'll be back here same time next week, next Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Have yourselves a wonderful evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.